desktop uh, connected to the main electricity supply uh, to avoid losing connection to this meeting. Again, it would be helpful if landlines are situated so if they do ring, they are muted and that if you have pets that they are not able to access the room you're working in and that other household distractions are kept to a minimum. We will be taking a short break between uh, uh, items on the agenda uh, and uh, a lunch break will be taken at, a, at an appropriate time uh, for about 20 minutes or so. May I remind everyone uh, that members of the committee have control of their own microphones, so please remember to turn them on when you start speaking and turn them off when you finish. Uh, Joe is in the uh, council chamber with me and has control of the mechanism for turning off the microphones for public speakers. Uh, and please may I ask any committee members and members of the public have the ca cameras turned on when they are speaking. Speakers will be advised when they have 30 seconds left and when their time is up. And I think it's appropriate to say at this time we have quite a number of speakers and the three minutes will be exercised rigidly to enable us to get through the agenda as expeditiously as possible. The chat function in Skype for Business is for the use of planning committee members only uh, to indicate that they would like to speak. Any members of the public uh, or other members should not use the chat function and if they do uh, I will ask them once to stop uh, and if they use it again uh, regrettably we will have to remove them from the meeting. Please be aware that you could disconnect yourself if you inadvertently press any of the buttons on your device but we do have IT support in the building uh, during the whole of the meeting should it be needed. If a member or members do get disconnected for more than a few seconds, I'll refer members and the public to 16.2 of the published protocol, i.e. adjournment of a meeting, uh, to enable us to reconnect uh, any members who have become disconnected. But uh, that uh, if, if we can't do that uh, in a, an appropriate amount of time, then we would have to uh, proceed with the meeting uh, and exclude that member uh, from the meeting. And I will also remind members that um, the public that the meeting is being recorded. I am here with Joe Toomey, Head of Governance in the Council Office and uh, between us we will manage the meeting. Um, the last point on housekeeping, members of the Planning Committee are now asked to contact the case officer with questions relating to clarification or explanation of content details within the report and I would like to thank the members for their due diligence in this regard. Case officers will refer to the questions asked and respond to them in verbal presentations and it may be that members need to make notes of the responses for further, for further reference uh, and uh, to ensure that all their points have been answered. Members will of course have opportunity to ask further questions of officers after public speaking. This procedure complies with the published protocol. Uh, members of the public that have uh, also sent in comments, we thank them, that's, thank them for taking the time and trouble and I can assure them that they have received serious scrutiny and will be taken into consideration in our deliberations. Uh, so I will now ask uh, Shelley Thurquell, I hope I've pronounced the surname correctly Shelley, uh, to, to begin the meeting with a roll call of members and officers and those members of the public who have registered to speak. Thank you Shelley. Thank you Chairman. <clears throat> Councillor Bob Adams. Present. Councillor David Bellamy. Present. Councillor Harish Biznathing. Present. Councillor Helen Crawford. Present. Councillor Phil Dilks. Present. Councillor Mike Exton. Present. Councillor Mrs. Rosemary Cabry Brown. Councillor Cabry Brown. We're just trying to get Councillor Cabry Brown into the meeting. Thank you. Councillor Penny Mills. Present. Councillor Charmaine Morgan. Present. Councillor Robert Reed. Present. Councillor Ian Selby. Present and good morning all. Councillor Jackie Smith. Present. Councillor Mrs Judy Smith. Present. I'll now move on to the speakers. 
Thank you, Shelley. So for agenda item four, we have Councillor Philip Knowles. Present. And Councillor Anna Kelly. Present. Thank you. Excuse me, I've registered to speak. It's Councillor Sue Woolley here. Okay, so uh, Shelley, if it will help, I'll deal with these because I've got a list of them in front of me. Um, yes, Councillor Sue Woolley, uh, Lincolnshire County Council, and I think we've dealt with Philip Knowles, Anna Kelly, and Helen Crawford, yes? So, uh, as public speakers, uh, Jonathan Budd, are you, are you present, please? Okay, come back to that. Sean. Yes, Jonathan Budd, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Sean. Sean Sinnett. Yes, present. Thank you. And the only one that, uh, oh, there's two others. Jane Connolly speaking on agenda item five. Jane Connolly. Okay, we'll come back to that. App the, the applicant's agent on uh, agenda item four is Samantha Bruman. Are you with us, Sam? That should be, hello Bob, it's Andrew Hodgson. I'm, I'm speaking on the, uh, the Longhurst and Alicia application. So you, 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 sorry Andrew, you're speaking on both uh, items? Uh, yeah, gender... yeah the, the Longhurst and the Alicia Care application is please. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Right, so the only one we're not certain about at the minute is Jane Connolly. It looks, Mr Chairman, Present, like... present yeah. sorry, the computer clicked out. That's all right, Jane. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Are we able to confirm if Councillor Cabry Brown is able to hear us? I can see she's in the meeting, but I'm not sure whether she's fully connected. Rosemary, are you with us? Are you connected? Can you hear me, Rosemary? <laughs> Are you wanting to continue without Councillor Cabry Brown pleasant present, Mr Chairman, or would you like us to try and Can, get her in? Well, I, I prefer not to start the agenda, the uh, application items until we know for certain whether we can uh, connect with her. The chat box says she's joined the meeting twice, Chair. It looks like she may have joined as a guest now. Councillor Cabry Brown, are you able to hear anything? Okay, well, what we'll do, we'll go on to item two and three. Um, Apologies, Chair. I've, I've also registered to speak. Uh, my name's Bob Willard. I've registered to speak on item seven. Oh, I beg your pardon. You're absolutely right. Uh, sorry. Um, there are other speakers. Uh, thank you for that, Bob, uh, on other items on the agenda. Um, so we've got count an I agenda item six. We've got uh, Councillor Baxter. Uh, and Present. David Shelton from Deeping, this town council. Uh, Mr Chairman, I, I saw um, uh, Mr Shelton yesterday and uh, he said he was going to join us um, a little later. He had something else on first. OK. Pamela Steele. Dr Chandra Misty, Mystery. I think what we'll do then, we'll, we'll call these in as we get to that the item on the agenda. But uh, thank you, Bob, for... Uh, uh, letting me know you're here. Is Ian Pick here, please? So again, Jay, uh, which, sorry? Hello, yeah, my name's Sam Harrison. I'm speaking on behalf of Ian Pick, who's unfortunately been called into a last minute meeting. I'm a colleague of Ian's. Sorry, what, what's the name again, sir? Uh, Sam Harrison. Sam Harrison. I'm a colleague of Ian's. Uh, so you have got the presentation that he was going to make, have you? I have. I've got a brief statement, yes, which I believe you already have a copy of. Thank you, Sam. OK, we'll, we'll, we'll check on the other speakers, Joe, as we get to the items yeah. on the agenda, please. Have we got connection with uh, Rosemary Cabry brown yet? I'm hoping if she speaks, we'll be able to hear her. Rosemary, can you hear me? Speak to me, Rosemary. Unmute your microphone. 
If she puts a video on it, it, we might see her if she's there. I know she has connect, connection oh. problems where she lives. Okay, we'll carry on while you move through. Yeah. So if we can go on to item two on the agenda, please, disclosures of interests. Does any member have any disclosure of interest other than those already recorded in the register? Uh, yes, Mr Chairman, uh, Councillor Philip Dilks here. I've got a non-pecuniary, probably peripheral interest as Chairman of Langtoft, Deeping and District Branch of the Royal British Legion, um, and the interest is on item 11, the erection of a war memorial <coughs> in Deeping. Thank you, Councillor Dilks. Thank you, Phil. I do intend to speak on it, though. Uh, I don't think... Um, no, no, no problem there, Phil. No Thank problem you. there. Okay. Any yeah. other member? Um, yes, I. It's it's not a pecuniary interest, but for the interest of property, um, item seven, Chandos House is in my ward, and I have been approached by um, a resident concerned about that particular development, and I did in fact contact officers regarding it. Um, to raise some questions with them, which I noticed wasn't in the papers, my my contact with them. So I just thought I'd, I'd let you be aware of that. Thank you, uh, Charmaine. I think one or two Chairman. of us have... I think, I think one or two of us have also been uh, lobbied on that particular one from different sources. Uh, but I don't know that that is a requirement uh, uh, to... Uh, as a declaration of interest, it's just... A, just a note that we've been lobbied, I think. So. Yes, that's all. Yeah. Thank you, Charmaine. Uh, Chairman, if I may say. Yes, please. Uh, thank you. So item six, uh, I am a county count, Lincolnshire County Councillor. I also sit uh, on planning and regs. Um, I have taken independent advice both from the county council and from the District Council and I would like to advise all members that I sit on this committee this morning as a member of the Planning Committee that I am open-minded and that there are no, from the legal advice from both parties, I have no um, commitments to declare. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Uh, any other member got any declarations of interest? Councillor Crawford's indicated as well, Mr Chairman. Councillor Crawford, Helen. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'll be speaking on items four and five. They are my ward, so therefore I won't be taking part in the debate or the vote. Thank you. Thank you for that, Helen. Uh, any I've others? Penny, got Councillor Penny? Milnes. Yes. Councillor Milnes, Penny, yes. please. I'm not used to this, and it probably isn't important, but um, uh, item eight is in my ward. I have made a, a, a suggestion on a condition, but I haven't been lobbied or anything like that. So. Okay, I don't know that that's a, 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 a sort of personal interest, uh, but thank you for, for mentioning it. Any, any further ones, Joe? No, no one indicating. Okay, well, I, I was going to make a personal statement when we came to uh, application six, but uh, I will do it now uh, and then that will. Uh, finish with that. Um, so, like Councillor Reid, I'm a member of Lincolnshire County Council. Uh, Deeping's Parish Council applied for village green status and was considered by the Planning and Regulations Committee of the County Council in July 2019. I acted as a substitute member of the committee when the application was heard. Lincolnshire County Council engaged Nottinghamshire County Council to evaluate the evidence applicable to the application. The findings of Nottinghamshire County Council was that there was no basis for granting the listing of the site as a village green. At that time, I was not a member of the South Gestephen District Planning Committee when I voted to support the officer's recommendation not to grant village green status to the site. A few days ago, I received an email from Councillor Baxter which suggested that I had a conflict of interest in the application before committee today. I passed this email to our monitoring officer for an opinion and I subsequently received a response from the legal officer of this committee which I will read out in full. In my view, village green legislation is totally separate to planning legislation. 
If you did inv indeed vote as a member of the Lincolnshire County Council Planning Committee, which I did, to refuse the application to have the land designated as a village green, this is completely separate to now sitting as a member of SKDC Planning Committee to determine a planning application for development of that land. Uh, as with Councillor Reid, I too have come to this uh, meeting with a completely open mind. I will listen to what is said, both from an officer and member and public speaker's point of view, uh, before determining or making up my mind which way I propose to vote. So I think that's dealt with all the declarations of interest and declarations or conflicts of interest. Can I move on to please to item three on the agenda, which is the minutes of our meeting held on the 30th of September. For accuracy only, please, may I have a, a proposal that uh, they be agreed as an accurate record? I propose, Chair. Let's have I'm a happy to second, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Crawford, Helen. Thank you, Councillor Reid, Robert. Uh, Mr Chairman, may I jump in, please? Um, yes, please, Jo. Thank you very much. Um, following the meeting last time, it was recognised that there was an action note to be um, to be added to the minutes of the meeting in respect of the Vinehouse Carby application. Um, when the committee were considering the application, it's, um, it, it requested that any reserved matters related to that site should be presented to committee for determination rather than determined under delegated powers. Um, if members are happy, we can add that to the minutes of the meeting so that it's formally captured. But just to reassure members, that has been fed back to the planning team anyway, so it is sitting on the planning file. OK, Councillor Crawford, Councillor Robert Reid, are you happy that that uh, addition is put into the minutes? Yes, I am. Uh, Yes, I was going to mention um, that it was correct as it uh, as the addition. So, uh, okay. Thank you. Members happy with that addition? Members happy to agree the accuracy of the minutes of the thirtieth of September? Yes, yes, Chairman. Do we need a formal vote, uh, Shelley? Yes. Or can we? Um, or... If you'd or... like to do a vote by exception, Mr. Chairman, then that might be the most efficient way of doing it. Uh, I would very much like to uh, do it by exception. Does any member not agree with the accuracy of the minutes? Please indicate in the chat box. Anything in the chat box, Joe? No, OK. So we'll take those minutes uh, as an accurate record of the meeting of the 30th of September. OK, before I call on the... Uh, uh, Chris Brown to introduce uh, agenda item four and five uh, did mention earlier that there are quite a number of speakers. Um, Chris is going to um, introduce both items of the, of the, on this agenda. He's going to introduce both item four and item five together. Uh, and I uh, and it will take about 10 or 15 minutes. And I'm going to ask the speakers who have uh, we've had, uh, said they wish to speak to consider uh, where they have said they wish to speak in separately on the, the two items, if they can um, condense their remarks, please, to uh, apply to both of the applications, which uh, might help to um, uh, speed things along. Um, I'd be very grateful. Do, does anybody have a particular problem with that? Uh, Chairman, could I speak to you, please? Yes, who are you speaking? It's Anna Kelly. Yes, Anna. If the speakers were to agree that, does that mean that those who propose the application will commute their time as well? Uh, yes, it does, yes. So they will just speak for three minutes on the both? Correctly, correct. So we will just speak for three minutes on the both? Thank you very much indeed. Yes, Philip, Councillor Knowles? Councillor Knowles, can you hear me? Yes, sorry, Bob. Uh, sorry, Chair. I'm content with that uh, as well. I will Thank make you. one speech um, and, and uh, make that do for them both because sorry. one follows the other, further, yeah, obviously. Thank you very much indeed, Phil. Very much appreciated. And I, uh, Helen has also indicated that. Sue, Councillor Sue Woolley? Uh, yes, thank you, Chairman. I'm happy to speak to both items at the same time. 
That is extremely kind of all of you. Um, do we have Jane Connolly in the meeting yet, please? Yes, yes, Chair, I'm here. Thank you, Jane. We we uh, we didn't hear from you when we first went through the names. Um, Sean Sinnott, uh, is it possible that you can uh, address both um, both applications with one presentation to committee? Yeah, we'll try to squeeze it all in. Yeah, um, but my wife will be reading it. But yes, um, yeah. Uh, Thank we'll you, Sean. Do our best. Thanks. OK, so uh, that's very helpful. Really appreciate that. Mr Chairman, I'm ever so sorry to interrupt, but you've also got Mr Hodgson, who's speaking for the applicant for both items. I understand. Andrew, are you happy to... I prepared, because I'm, I'm acting for two separate clients. I know they're the same, effectively the same site, and they're going together, but I've got two three-minute presentations, one for the care home and one for the housing element prepared, and I'd like to do them separately, please. OK, uh, I'm yeah. happy to go along with that um, uh, and uh, perhaps be a little bit uh, a bit more uh, liberal on the times that other members might speak, if you're happy with that, Andrew. Yeah, that's fine. It's just that I am acting for two um, separate uh, clients understand. here in Alicia Care and Longhurst, and I think we've both, they've both prepared, we've prepared three-minute presentations for each. They'll only be three minutes, obviously, so that's fine. If that if you're happy with that, I'm happy with that. That's Thank you for that clarification, Andrew. Very much appreciated. Uh, Chris, Sam, can I speak, please? Who's, who's, who is that? You can speak if you tell. Who wanted to speak, please? Right. Yes, Anna. Anna, sorry. Um, can I just say we've missed out Jonathan Budd. And, of course, I'm glad that you will accept to be liberal with the people who are prepared to give up their time, unlike the applicants. Thank you. Uh, I thought we'd call Jonathan Budd. Yes, we did call My Jonathan apologies. Budd. Yeah, yeah. My apologies. We did indeed. OK, can we move then to Chris? Chair, um, Chair may I speak? Philip Knowles. Um, may Philip? I speak, Bob? Philip, yeah. Uh, it seems it seems wrong. I'd prepared two speeches. Um, I'm busy now trying to cram them all into one. They don't naturally go together. Um, I, I'm fairly content um, that uh, I will speak to one but can I reserve the right to speak a, a second time, should I feel the necessity to do so, not, um, not, for about not, a minute? Not really, Phil, because then I've got to extend that to everybody. Well, you said I can take extra time now, but it doesn't follow, and it will become confusing. But um, uh, the applicant has is, is, is now been allowed to speak twice. Um, it, it follows that if, should they wish, any op opponents who've registered to speak should be able to have the same facility. Now, I don't propose to use it, but I think that they should have the same facility because in the second speech, we sort of may bring up something which is um, not appropriate or controversial or downright wrong or whatever, and it might need to be um, challenged. And we, we need to have that opportunity to challenge. I hope that that won't be necessary. I don't think it'll be necessary for myself, um, but, but I think we have to have that right to do so, should should the occasion arise. Uh, Chairman, can I step in here? It's, no, uh, just, can, can we stop there? Martha Martha's indicated that she wishes to contribute. Martha? Thank you, um, Mr Chairman. I think there's been a slight confusion in that um, Mr Hodgson has prepared two um, speeches, obviously, for separate clients. I think he does intend to read one after the other, in that so he will speak once, but read the two speeches. Therefore, Chairman, with um, to, to clarify, if you'll let me, it, Councillor Knowles, if you feel that you cannot condense the two speeches, then you, I'm sure the Chairman may agree, given he has for Mr Hodgson, that you could read both your speeches back to back, but it's that each person will speak once. OK, I'm, thank you for that, Martha. I'm going to move on. I'm going to call Chris to present the two, uh, the, uh, to, I'm... to present, uh, no, uh, I'm going to move on. I'm going to ask Chris to present the uh, the two applications as one, and then we will uh, we'll see how we go. Before will, did you we want begin, to come in? please can we check if we've got Councillor Cabry Brown? Rosemary, are you with us? Councillor Cabry Brown, can you hear me? Well, I think we'll have to exclude Rosemary from these uh, these two applications. Will, did you wish to say something? Hello, can oh, you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now, Rosemary. 
Good, good. Um, Chairman, just a, a brief point. Uh, just uh, um, to, to uh, it's William Richards here, interim head of planning. Um, I appreciate the comments that have been made by the speakers, um, and um, we have a number of items on today's agenda. Twelve items. And uh, I think your request was a, a reasonable one, if I may say so. Um, and given that all the speakers, bar the applicant's agent, uh, were prepared to go along with your suggestion, may I suggest or ask that the uh, agent for the two applications condense uh, the two presentations in, into one, um, because instead of reading them out verbatim, perhaps he can give us the gist of both in the time period. All the other speakers are prepared to do the That's same. Right. Thank you. No. Andrew? Uh, sorry, no, William, I'm not prepared to do that. I mean, these are separate planning applications, so we have the right as, a, as an applicant to have our three minutes on each planning application. I know they're on the same site, but they are standalone planning applications, and I'm representing I've got to represent my clients to the best of my ability, and I need to do three minutes for each of my clients on those two sites. So they are separate standalone planning applications, and any other time you would have three minutes on each. Okay, we're not going to resolve this. Uh, we will revert to uh, three minutes for every speaker. Uh, I, thought, I was hoping we could probably uh, uh, be a little bit expeditious with it, but uh, if that's how it has to be, that's how it has to be. Chris, could you do the joint presentation, please, and then we'll have we'll have the speakers. Thank you, Chairman. Just bear with me a second, I'll uh, get the presentation loaded. I think, Mr Chairman, there may have been an issue with server connection, which is why people seem to be jumping in and out a lot. So oh, we, I was going to say, Mr. Sorry, Mr Chairman, um, I don't know quite what happened to my connectivity, but hopefully uh, if someone could make me uh, let me know if the presentation is now available to view. Mr Chairman, just to say, um, Joe is right. Um, I was thrown out of the meeting It just and it said it was an internet overload or something of that order. Um, and I'm just worried if um, other members of the committee may not be um, present. Is there any other, any member of the committee that cannot see the presentation it looks being like presented? There are can, a number can, who are still rejoining. Some are still rejoining. Sorry, Chairman, I'm, I don't know if you can hear me, but I'm unable to hear you, I'm afraid. I can't hear anything. You can't hear me? I have, I, I, I'm uh, unmuted, uh, Chris. I suggest another roll call, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, we'll get the IT sorted out. Once you've done that, obviously. Have we all gone blank? Yeah, I've, I've got my screen on, which is showing me the first uh, first page of the uh, presentation. I, I've got mine too. No, I haven't. I, I have. Colleagues can see, but Sue Woolley and Penny Milnes have indicated that they've lost contact. Okay, can we get on to IT, please, yeah. Joe? I can't see anything. I can hear you. 
Chris, is it worth, I know you've already shared your screen, but is it worth trying to take it down and resharing it? Uh, it looks, Chairman, as people are coming back, because we've got Sue Willard that's rejoined the meeting. Um, and most of the others are just still missing on Penny Milne at the minute, by the looks of it. I can't see anything. Oh, it, I'm back in now, Robert. Thank you. Well done, darling. It appears that the presentation seemed to have wiped everybody out. Yeah. Yes, I'm back. I, mean, I suddenly couldn't hear anything. As soon as I loaded up the presentation, I couldn't hear anything. So I was reluctant to start without sort of confirmation that anybody could see it or hear me. Can you hear us now, Chris? I can hear you, can, Chairman. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Can I confirm, is the presentation available to view? Can everybody see the presentation? We can yeah. see it. I'm just yes. wondering whether we need to do a roll call, Joe. Sorry, I can't see anything and my computer's not let me do anything. So I'm going to have to turn it off and come back. Yeah, Helen, go out and come back in. I'm going to have to just shut it down. OK, we'll wait for you. Thank you. Sorry. Chairman, it's Martha. I would suggest a roll call before we begin with the presentation. Yeah, we will do, Martha. Thank you. Shelley, can you do a roll call of people now and then we'll know who we need to contact if they're not, uh, if they haven't been able to rejoin? Yes, Chairman, certainly. Councillor Bob Adams. Present. Councillor David Bellamy. Present. Councillor Harish Bisnell Singh. Present. Councillor Helen Crawford. Not back yet. Councillor Phil Dilks. Present. Sorry, was that was that present? Yes, present. Thank you. Councillor Mike Exton. Councillor Exton. It doesn't look like he's fully back in the meeting. Thank you. Councillor Rosemary Cabry Brown. Councillor Penny Milnes. Rosemary, did we? Are you there? Are you with us? Yes. Thank you. Can you hear me? Thank, Thank you. you. Councillor Penny Milnes. Yes, present. Councillor Charmaine Morgan. Present. Councillor Robert Reed. Present. Councillor Ian Selby. Present. Councillor Jackie Smith. Councillor Jackie Smith. Councillor Mrs Judy Smith. Present. Thank you. Councillor Jackie Smith, are you able to hear us? Okay. Helen Crawford, have you been able to get back in? So we're three missing. Councillor Crawford, Councillor Exton and Councillor Jackie Smith. Hi, I'm on the phone to IT at the minute. Um, my screen has frozen. I can't do anything with it. I can hear you all, but I can't see you. Thank you, Helen. Councillor Exton, Mike, can you hear us? IT. Has somebody got the Has somebody got the microphone on? There's background noise. Could. I think Councillor Knowles may now be in the meeting. Councillor Knowles, can you confirm? Yes, I'm back, back in the meeting. I'm back in the meeting as of Thank about you, 30 seconds ago. Thank you. Thank you. Hello there, it's Councillor Helen Crawford. I'm supposed to be in a planning meeting. Are all the public speakers back in the meeting? We know Philip is Sue Woolley. Yes, I am. Thank, Thank you, you, Chairman. Anna Kelly. Present. Helen Crawford. Can you hear Jonathan Budd? Jonathan Budd. Can you hear me? Jonathan, are you able to confirm for us, please? I've just unmuted your microphone, so you should just be able to speak. 
Jonathan? Sean Sinnott? Yes, present. Thank you. Thank you. Andrew, yes? Yes, back. Thank you. Thank you. Jane Connolly? Yes, Chair. Thank you. Jonathan Budd, we want. Is he showing us in the meeting, Joe? Mike is in the meeting and his microphone's are muted, but whether he can't hear us. Okay. Uh, Helen, are you back with us? Mike Exton? Jackie Smith? Okay, sorry about this, folks, but uh, we'll give it a few more minutes. And if we can't get connectivity, um, we've got all the public speakers back in. If we are, if we can't get one or two of the committee members, um, we may have to exclude them from these two items. Mike Exton, can you hear us? Thank you. Councillor Exton, if you can hear us, I'm just going to remove you from the meeting and try and pull you back in again. Has Helen Crawford been able to rejoin? It looks like she's in the process of rejoining now. Good. Jackie Smith? Just to let you I'm, I'm back on. Can you hear me? Yes, Jackie, thank you. Right. I'm back here in the room. Thank you, Helen. So we've just got Mike Exton. He's dropped again. Well, we'll give it one more minute and then uh, uh, we will have to uh, invoke 16.2. Chris, we've lost your presentation now, if you can hear me. Chris Brown, can you hear me? Yes, Chairman, uh, thank you for that. I've just tried loading this up again. Again, I'd be grateful if you could let me know when you can see it. Yes, I can see it again. Excellent, thank you. Thank you. Can they... We can see that, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Good. Mike Exton, are you with us? Back with us. We can see the display now, Mr. Chairman. Can you, are Doesn't, you in contact with Mike, Joe? IT uh, on the phone with him now. I'll give it one more minute and then uh, we really will have to move on. Not the best start of the meeting, Mr. Chairman. 40 minutes into the meeting, not on the first item yet. Thank you for that observation, Ian. Very helpful. Councillor Exton may be in the meeting now. At the bottom of their screen, um, which might be helpful to solve this problem, mine says in a yellow bar that you might notice some features aren't available because Marianne Knipe isn't using Skype for business. Yeah, I've seen that a time or two, Phil. So, oh, was it? I'm sorry. Sorry. It's all right, Matt, no problem. Mike Exton, are you with us? 
Uh, I've got the first sheet, first sheet of the presentation. Oh, right. we're, we're all back. We're all back present then, Chris. Uh, we're cooking on gas. Could you proceed, please? Chris Brown. Uh, good morning, Chairman, and uh, good morning, Planning Committee. I won't put the, the presentation into slideshow mode. Hopefully, everybody can see it as presented. Um, I don't want to whisk uh, anything sort of happening again. Okay. Um, these applications are presented together and are for the erection of 110 affordable dwellings, outlined for three self-built plots, which is S19 at 2111, and the erection of an 80-bed care home and 22 retirement apartments, which is S19 at 2134. Key issues raised in the, uh, the applications are the principle of development, highway safety and traffic impact, impact on the character and appearance of the area, and impact on neighbouring residential amenity. The aerial view of the site shows the application site is located to the northwest of Bourne, as shown, with then a lower level aerial view showing the site to be an agricultural use, with access shown from Beaufort Drive to the east of the site. This is the red line application site, which shows the site in the context of Bourne and also some nearby constraints, including the conservation area. This is the site location planned for S19-2111 for the 110 affordable dwellings and the three self-built plots, with then the care home and retirement apartments proposed within the blue line plan shown. This photo shows the, the view and this is looking northwest across the whole site. And now the view looking south from the access point to uh, this is looking towards Beaufort Drive, uh, sorry, from Beaufort Drive, looking to Large Close, Willow Drive and Holly Drive, uh, which is along the south and eastern boundaries of the site. The representation viewpoints uh, shown on your screen now provided by the applicant as part of their landscape appraisal provide a more zoomed out view looking back across the site to the eastern and southern boundaries, which is the top picture and across the western boundary, which is the bottom picture. The, this photo now shows the viewpoint locations and public right of way locations in the context of the site. Moving on to the proposed layout, uh, this proposed layout plan shows both applications uh, all together on the same site. So the proposed layout of 110 affordable dwellings and self-build plots, those three self-build plots are shown on your screen there in purple. Access as, as shown is shown from Beaufort Drive to the east of the site, with an open space shown through the centre and to the southwestern corner of the site. This 10-year plan now on your screens uh, just concentrates on the 110 affordable units proposed. So this shows the proposed 10 years of affordable housing, with the pink showing 35 dwellings proposed to be managed by SKDC. The blue shows 40 dwellings proposed for affordable rent. The green is 20 dwellings proposed for shared ownership, and the yellow shows 20 dwellings proposed for the rent to buy. The, moving on to the illustrative master plan, this now covers the whole site again, covering both applications. The majority of dwellings shown are set to the northwestern corner of the site and along the western edge of the site, with the care home shown and the retirement apartments to the northeastern corner of the site. The illustrative landscape master plan now in front of you shows the whole site again, covering both applications. Attenuation basins are shown to the southwest corner and also along the eastern side of the site. Uh, additional planting is proposed along road frontages and footpath routes to and from the public open space proposed within the site, with, together with significant additional planting shown to the northern boundary, north and east of the proposed care home. Just quickly on the boundary treatments plan, uh, this shows a mix of um, brick walls shown in blue, timber fencing shown in purple, post and rail fencing shown in green, and knee rails shown in orange. The proposed street, uh, street scene view is now on your screen, so the, this shows the eastern boundary of the site, which is the, the top view of the screen, and this is viewed from Beaufort Drive and Streatham Way to the east of the site. It then shows across the northern boundary, which is in the middle, and down the western boundary to the bottom. Um, all of them show two-storey dwellings shown. Mr Chairman, while Chris just pauses for breath, we're having some reports in the chat box that people aren't able to see the presentation. 
Okay. Chris, I'm assuming this uh, presentation you're showing is the same as the hard copy we've all received? It is, uh, Chairman. Yes, there are some minor modifications to, to some wording and to a couple of slides, but uh, the, the vast majority of it, easily 90% of it, is, is as you've already seen. Thank you. Are the people saying who they can't see? Are they members of the committee or members of the public, Jim? We've, we've got members of the public and Martha, who's obviously our legal advisor for today, who can't see anything. Councillor Morgan, you should be able to drop the picture, drag and drop the picture of Chris somewhere else so you can see the full screen. Martha, how critical is it that members of the public can see the presentation? Um, are they members of the public registered to speak, Chairman? Uh, uh, Joe, mm. can you answer that question? Um, the person that's indicated isn't, no. Are we all right to proceed then, Martha? I think as long as all um, members of the public are uh, excuse me, can I speak? This is Jane Connolly and I can't see anything apart from Chris either and I'm due to speak for the Alicia site. Okay. Can I put in here, Mr Chairman, it's William Richards, uh, Interim Head of Planning. Um, given that uh, the speakers have uh, seen the application, uh, hence their comments uh, they're going to be making today, um, that should be sufficient in my opinion. Uh, what Chris is doing now is just summarising uh, the, the key proposals, all of which will have been seen by people who are speaking uh, when viewing the application. So I don't think this should be should bar uh, uh, the presentation and the item. Thank you for that, Will. Chris, could you proceed then, please? Thank you, Chairman. Yes, in, in front of your uh, screens now, uh, committee, these are three uh, proposed visuals provided by the applicant. So this shows the entrance to the site from Bofa Drive looking south. Now to the west of the care home, looking west, and then now looking at the western boundary. This is now the proposed site plan. Uh, this is specifically just for the care home and retirement apartments, with the care home at the top and retirement apartments below. The elevations are now shown for the, the care home. So at the top here is the south elevation, uh, which is facing back into the site, looking south. The apartment shown in the middle and the, uh, the eastern elevation of the care home shown at the bottom there of your screen. And then just moving around the corner, uh, this now shows the northeast elevation at the top of your screen. Uh, the north elevation which faces out of the site, uh, northwards in the middle, uh, and then the western elevation at the bottom. Just quickly over the, the proposed floor plans, that's the ground floor plan and the first floor plan of the care home. Uh, both are symmetrical layouts proposing eight feet total, together with associated lounge areas and with a cafe shown to the ground floor plan also. And moving on, we've got three CGI images of the care home. So this shows the care home uh, on the left hand side of the screen and the retirement apartments directly in front of you. Now moved around, so it's the retirement apartments on the right, the care home in front of you. And finally, uh, a sort of closer view of the care home directly in front of you. In terms of the evaluation of the, the two proposals, uh, the site itself, uh, and that's considered to be the wider site covering both applications, it's considered to be an edge of settlement location with policy SP4 therefore applied. The proposed affordable housing provision is welcomed, however it has not been demonstrated that other sites aren't available and with no viability assessment has been provided to justify the inclusion of the three self-built plots proposed. Further, none of the retirement apartments proposed are considered to be affordable, again with no viability assessment provided to justify this. The proposal is therefore not considered solely as a rural exception site and does not therefore benefit from community support as required with policy SP4. With, without working together with both the affordable dwellings and the proposed care home and retirement apartments recommended for refusal, the proposals are each considered to be detached from the existing built form and would be considered contrary to policies DE1, EN1 and SP4 of the local plan. No highway or residential means impacts are considered and the applications are not recommended for refusal on these reasons. The provision of three self-build plots within the proposal is noted and it's noted that there is a district-wide need for self-build plots as set out in policy H3 of the local plan together with a duty to keep a register for the need for self-build plots and a duty to grant permission to meet these needs. 
However, the need for self grow plots is not considered to outweigh the overall conflict of local plan policies between the two schemes, with the proposals considered contrary to policy SP4 in terms of principle, as well as individually considered to be harmful to the character and appearance of the area, and therefore in conflict with policies EN1, D1 and SP4. I also wish to draw members' attention to the additional items paper, with commentary of the proposal against an appeal decision provided by the applicant. This is in relation to self build plots. The provision of affordable housing and self build plots is welcomed. However, the two proposals are con still considered not to be policy compliant, with conflict arising from the lack of community support for a site that is not wholly a rural exception site, and with each site taken individually res to result in harm to the character and appearance of the area. The planning balance, therefore, remains the same with the recommendation for refusal of both applications S19-2111 and S19-2134. In addition, a further refusal reason on drainage grounds is proposed in the additional items paper for application S19-2134 only, and this is set out in the additional items paper. The applications are recommended for refusal. Chairman, I'll, I'll keep the presentation up. I've got some slides from some of the public speakers, so I'll keep the presentation loaded up and I can refer to those slides as the public speakers refer to them. Thank you. Thank you for that, Chris. Uh, first public speaker is Philip Knowles. Phil, can you cover both in the sort of five or six minutes? Yes, I will. I will cover the, I'll do my three minute speech, if that's all right, that for the first item. And then within one minute, just add a couple of items for the second item. So it, it saves a bit of time if I'm allowed. Thank you, Phil. That would be very helpful. Thank you. Um, so, thank you, Mr Chair. Uh, my name is Philip Knowles and I represent Bourne Town Council and the vast majority of local residents who oppose this application, these applications. While I welcome the recommendation to reject, I wish to take issue with two aspects of the report and raise a strategical issue that is not addressed. The idea that there are no traffic issues arising from this application is frankly ludicrous. A few years ago, proposed development of 20 houses was rejected with traffic issues a key element. Now, one, three, five homes plus associated developments is apparently not a problem. But I believe a colleague will elaborate on this later on, so I'm not going to know more about it. I also believe that the planner's consideration to allocate a low level of importance to the work of Bourne Neighbourhood Plan is mistaken. The people of Bourne have earned and been awarded that decision-making process over housing land allocation. SKD's local plan statement of community consultation in 2019 reported that, and I quote, the most attended session was in Bourne, where over 400 people attended during the course of the day. And there was, again, I quote, widespread objection to the provisional housing applications. That substantial objection remains, and any suggestion otherwise by developers is false and bogus. When the Beaufort Drive site was withdrawn from the provisional list, SKD announced that future consideration for the allocation of housing sites should become the responsibility of the Bourne Neighbourhood Plan Team and Bourne Town Council, planning for a build of 200 houses reporting by 2023. Bourne accepted and still accepts that challenge. This was endorsed by the Inspectorate of the SKD lo uh, SKDC local plan as recently as January 2020, but this was for 100 houses as he referred to a development at Manning Road suitable for 107 houses. He wrote, quote, the modified approach to housing supply in Bourne would be effective, justified and positively prepared, and added that the land in the east of the town had the best connectivity to the town centre. The uh, Bourne ex neighbourhood team uh, has got an experienced consultant has been employed, and all possible sites, including Beaufort Drive, have been evaluated fairly, objectively, and using best practice techniques. And the findings are now out to publication, uh, out to public consultation. Uh, the team are progressing steadily with increasing momentum. Bourne's quota for housing in the local plan is 8% of SKD total, about 65 houses per annum. Can it possibly be right that a proposal relying on a dubious loophole? 30 seconds. And in a planning priorities on a greenfield site for more than double the annual quarter of houses supersedes the authorised uh, planning process. Peterborough is 18 miles south of Bourne, Spalding and Stamford 12 miles east and west respectively. Lincoln is 40 miles away north. Uh, there is no straight route and no public transport to Grantham. Economically, socially, retail value, employment prospects, every reason means that Bourne faces south. Most Bourne traffic goes south. The proposals to build in the north of the town means that almost all generated traffic will throw a plough through a congested town centre, or even worse, filter through housing areas, creating rat runs adjacent to a school. All strategic That's thinking. That's the initial three minutes. 
Okay, I shall um, have one minute on the other, if I may, Bob. Oh. How much more have you got on your first one, please, Phil? About 10 seconds. Go on, then. Uh, any strategic thinking suggests that development should concentrate to the south and east, where suitable land is available and where there is access and egress to the south, west and east without invading the town centre or an established housing complex. That's it, Bob. Thank you, Phil. Does that cover both applications? No, I've, I've got about a minute on the second. I've, I've, I'm cutting it down as, as we speak from three minutes to one minute. I Thank think you, I've Phil. done that as we've been yeah. in the morning about with the uh, IT. You've done um, very well, Phil. Would you like to speak on the second application now, then, please? Yes. Two, 2134 is clearly related development on a piece of land that is not designated for development to the north of, of Bourne. Um, once again, can I quote the inspector report? He, he reported, this is in 2020, I am mindful of the representation seeking additional land releases in Bourne, including specifically, specifically for care home provision. The neighbourhood plan process will provide a framework for additional provision in the short term in order to conform to the plan including policy BRN1. That is the inspector who looked at the SKDC local plan and confirmed that Bourne Town Council should have uh, some say over where, where building is to take place. The location is on the very northerly outskirts of Bourne and it's some distance from any main road and, and it is not ideal so they're leased for a care home and associated dwellings. The inspector referred to its poor connectivity compared to development to the east of the town. Um, however, these arguments stand secretary to the fact that there is no case for a new care home in Bourne, and other speakers will provide information on that, so I'll not go into that again. Um, uh, da -da -da. The public does not... Uh, so, sorry, I'll just finish with one, one sentence, if I might. Um, Yeah, SKDC's recently declared ambition is to be the very best place for people to work, to visit and to live. Developers should withdraw this application and work with and for the people of Bourne. Bourne understands its responsibilities and will take them seriously. Opportunities will become available. Help Bourne fulfil the SKD vision of the future. Thanks very much indeed, Bob. Sorry to keep you time. Thank you, Phil. Very, very appreciative of your uh, your help there. Councillor Sue Woolley, County Councillor Sue Woolley, please. Thank you very much indeed, Chairman. I'm going to speak to both items, so I too will speak very quickly. I'm the County Councillor representative for Bourne North, and these applications fall within this division. These proposals are not in the SKDC local plan for Bourne. Whilst always supportive of affordable housing, it must be in an area where those who will live there will derive maximum benefit for minimum extra cost. These proposals are on the very edge of the town of Bourne, so far out of the town on the very outskirts that it is one mile to the nearest supermarket and one mile to the nearest primary school on foot. There is no public transport within 500 metres, so whilst the house might be affordable, the costs associated with living there are not. There will be one road in and one road out of the development, which leads on to an already very busy junction on the A15 North Road Bourne. The town and all amenities necessitate a right turn at this junction. These proposals sit in an area recognised by residents as the Green Lung of Bourne, a space that is between the town and Bourne Woods. The developments are not needed in Bourne and would create an eyesore on the landscape. Correspondence dated 2012-19 from Lincolnshire County Council state that they would not support the 80-bed care home as such a large development smacks of an institution and a large number of older residents have suggested to me personally that this place would be akin to a prison for the old and vulnerable with very little means of escape, at least on foot. Whilst provision for the vulnerable and elderly is needed in the south of the county, it is not needed in Bourne. There are several sites in the Bourne area which are already in the local plan and could be used to provide affordable housing. One is within 100 metres of a local town primary school. I've received enough concerns from local residents to say that these proposals at this particular site are not in the interests of Bourne residents. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Woolley. Very helpful. Uh, Councillor Annie Ke Anna Kelly, please. 
Thank you, Chairman. If I could speak first of all about the houses. By the way, I will be try and be cooperative and quick. Thank you. Um, I used to be a member of the neighbourhood plan, but since I have been speaking with residents about their opposition to this application, I have removed myself from the neighbourhood plan so that they can remain totally away from this application and they are truly keeping their independence. So I am now speaking as a representative of the people rather than of the neighbourhood plan. In terms of the social housing, I have an issue with affordable housing, but that's only from my personal experience of trying to find affordable housing for my son in London. That is irrelevant. I know it's accepted by other people, but if anybody's ever thinking of doing it, please come and tell me and I'll tell you the pitfalls. The other thing is these houses, as they are being presented on this site, if you look, it's very obvious from the map that was shown to us by the planner that the tenure arrangement is that all the houses that will be potentially owned by South Kestevan District Council are being pushed behind the nursing home up into the northwest corner. Then the houses are sorted by tenure. It's a form of divide and rule of people and it's about this whole wider picture of why are we even thinking of putting all affordable housing together. Bourne has a great integ integrated town. We have on Elsie Park lots of houses that are under the banner of affordable and social housing but I can't tell you which ones they are because they are fully integrated as they should be. In the older parts of the town, where we have, say, Ancaster Road, and we have what are traditionally called council houses, they are so well designed, they are considered desirable. And lots of people clamour to live in them. Tenants clamour to come from Elsie Park tenancies into our older social housing because we have such good plans. Now, I understand early on in the times when it was decided that SKDC would go into partnership with Longhurst and offer these houses, SKDC's minimum standards for room sizes were actually higher than Longhurst and so the council houses will actually be better than the other ones. Also want to put on the fact that the neighbourhood plan a long time ago seconds. discussed with Longhurst the idea that we were not against affordable housing, but this was perhaps not the best place for it to be. Longhurst are not interested in changing the site whatsoever. They wouldn't have that discussion. So I'd like to know if their first priority is this project with their partner on the edge of the town, or whether their first priority is affordable housing for Bourne. I think that's an important point. Uh, I'd like to talk about the care home now, if I could, please. Shall I carry on, Joe? That was your initial three minutes is just up. Excellent. Carry on, Anna. Yep. Right. In terms of the care home, at a pre-planning meeting, Councillor Dilk specifically asked the question, how tall is this building? And he was told it is only two storeys. I know that the centre part of the care home, and you can see it from the CGI images, is two and a half storeys tall. It's 12 and a half metres. The houses that already exist on Foxley Court are roughly in total eight metres high. This will be having this central atrium that sticks out, as the picture shows now, it also sticks out to the northern boundary of Bourne. It is going to totally change the landscape for the people using the footpath to Cawthorpe, the people who live in Cawthorpe, and everyone who approaches from the northern edge of the town. It will definitely dominate. The other thing is that the care home in Stamford, the Alicia care home, has had many modifications since it went through planning. And I'd really like to know if the planners would might like to ask if there's planning more modifications to this one once the initial plan is through. But my biggest single issue with the care home is that the planning application came with 53 documents, which I went through every word. So the people who paid all the money to have that writing done will be really pleased that somebody read every word. There were 53 documents attached. 
The flood risk and drainage report was from a company called BSP Consulting and they were employed by the Longhurst Group to provide the flood risk and drainage report. It says in the executive summary of that document, if I can just find it on my paper, recommend this is on page three of the executive summary of the attached document, bullet point four. Flows from the northeastern care home catchment will be restricted to five litres per second. The method of attenuating the care home site will be confirmed by others as the on-site drainage strategy for the care home does not fall within the scope of this report. And you can check every one of those 53 documents and there is no drainage strategy for the Alicia care home. If it were to drain naturally, it would follow probably the pattern of the land as it does farmland now, which if you look at the environmental agency map, if you find Oxley Court up the top there, problems with flooding, look at the old 25 year old attenuation pond just behind North Road, very likely to flood. There are no calculations for a one in a hundred year flood. There is no plan and it should not pass itself. It's unlawful for a local authority to accept plans without full details of drainage. We won't talk about archaeology, which is of local interest, because they don't care about it. But we Anna, do. Anna, you've only got a few seconds left. I was going to say that's time, Mr Chairman. Done. Have you done? Yes, thank you very much. OK, Anna, thank you very much indeed. Uh, Councillor Helen Crawford. Helen, please. Hello, thank you, Chairman. I shall try and do mine both together. Thank you. Right. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I'm Councillor Helen Crawford and uh, these applications are in my ward. I would like to speak in support of the office, officer's recommendations for the refusal of these two applications. Local Plan 2011 to 2036 SP4 Developments on the Edge of Settlement. It states that certain criteria must be met. This criteria has, um, sorry, it must demonstrate clear evidence of substantial support from local community, parish, town council and neighbourhood plans. This criteria has not been met as there's from the very beginning been very strong local opposition from community and Bourne Town Council. Please read pages 35, item 6.11 on the report from the officers. It will show you everybody's comments there. Again, for the criteria of the um, care home. The criteria has not been met as again from the beginning there has been local opposition from the community and town council. Please see to page 52 item 6.1. Over 425 letters of objection. That does not demonstrate a clear um, support from the local community. D does not extend obtrusively into the open countryside and must be appropriate to the landscape environmental to the area. These both extend obtrusively um, into the countryside, bringing the town ever closer from to Bourne Woods and all its wildlife. It is outside the town's curtilage and would change the view of the town for the residents of Cawthorpe and people travelling down from the north. I believe that we have still have 720, uh, 750 more dwellings to be built at Elsie Park and a percentage of those will be affordable housing. We have numerous houses, bungalows and flats for sale in the town. We are also expecting another 107 dwellings to be built in Manning Road, which is a site more central to the town. The location of the care home is completely wrong location. It would be stuck out on a limb with no nearby amenities and it would be nearly a walk, a mile walk into town. The increased traffic by staff, res residents, delivery, emergency service would all have a great impact on the residents of Beaufort Drive. Also, the A15, as I understand it, is a designated red route by the County Council and highways. It is often very difficult to get on the A15 from any of the roads that join in the North Road, not forgetting that the A15 is also the A1 bypass, as like last week when there's a serious accident on the A1 near Grantham, the A1 was closed and all traffic gets diverted through Bourne. This is South Kestevan's first local plan. It took five years of hard work to make it happen. 
we must as a council use a local plan as our book of rules and guidance for our planning decisions if we fail to do this as a council we will open up the floodgates all future applications will be able to ignore the local plan as we have set a presidency by agreeing to this application we will have failed all the towns and parishes who have completed their neighbourhood plans and like the local plan it will not be worth the paper it is written on thank you thank you helen uh, next speaker is jonathan budd please speaking on the first on the uh, agenda item four can, can you hear me jonathan can you hear me now yes we can indeed thank you right thank you very much good morning everyone um, I'm a local resident uh, living to the south of the proposed development. I've lived here for 30 years. I'm opposed to the uh, development on a couple of points, starting off with the surface water flooding risk. I've got serious concerns regarding the drainage of the site and its potential impact on existing housing around the proposed development, particularly to the southwest corner. The runoff rate seems to have been underestimated for the southwest catchment of the development. The flood risk assessment and drainage strategy document states in section 4.1.12 that the southwest catchment has an area of 2.17 hectares. Uh, the eastern catchment area has a 3.96 hectare area. Uh, these giving a calculated runoff of 8.29 litres per second and 15.13 litres per second respectively. If you can look at the figure now on the screens, this is the surface water plan, drainage plan from the report. It shows the catchment area in the black line running from the north to the east of the development. I think it's fairly obvious that the southwest catchment area there is actually larger than the eastern one, which is, goes against what the report says. I've calculated it to be about 3.8 hectares giving a runoff almost twice that uh, that the report suggests, which in turn uh, suggests that the attenuation pond in that area there of 707 metres squared cubed should be double the size. Even if the uh, attenuation pond was made the correct size, I've got serious concerns about the runoff. If I can have slide two, please. The southwest corner has a very small culvert that's about 45 centimetres diameter, or one, one, uh, one foot six in old currency. And uh, again, in section um, section 4.1.16, uh, it says that the, there's a one in 30 year, uh, the attenuation plant was flooding in one in 30 years, one in 100 years for buildings. Any additional water coming off, surface water coming off that site, uh, will cause flooding down through that culvert, as can be seen from the Environment Agency, surface water flooding. 30 that will seconds. Continue, continue down through Elderwood Close, Stanley Street and Christopher Lane. My second issue is about the open green space. Can I have the third slide, please? And Holly Drive and Willow Drive. This is a very quiet cul-de-sac, not designed for through traffic. There's some very mature, nice trees along the northern edge of that green park that are 30 years old. This is a, um, it's not suitable for a pedestrian link. There's nothing in the information about how that's going to be built, who owns the land. It will involve one of the trees being cut down. That's time, and Mr. Chairman. path built through there. And I'm unhappy that uh, that's going to change the nature of the area. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Jonathan. Uh, Sean Sinnett, who is going to speak to both applications. Sean? Hello there. Yeah, we will do um, cover both applications in the one. So, um, yeah, we're ready to go with the slideshow with it. We've done. Thank you very much. When you're ready. Okay. Sorry, um, my name's Tamsin. I'm talking on behalf of um, Sean Sinnett. Good morning, everybody. Um, so, um, First of all, uh, in 2011, a planning permission on this site for 20 houses was turned down. One of the reasons was the additional traffic to be using Beaufort Drive and the North Road Junction. Um, my PowerPoint presentation shows the same junction in August 2020. 
Lincolnshire County Council may say that traffic is not an issue with this planning application and give it the go ahead. And the developers may have their survey, but neither live here. Um, on my first slide, the junction shows the junction on the A15 North Road and Beaufort Drive. Most vehicles want to go south through the centre of Bourne in the morning. Next slide, please. This vehicle is waiting at the junction, as you can see. Next slide. Still waiting as the traffic queues to go southbound. Next slide. And the silver blue car has disappeared. Next slide, please. The driver makes a three point turn to avoid this junction, as you can see. Next slide. Uh, as you can see, the three point turn nearly causes an accident. The white van has had to mount the curb in order to miss the car making a three point turn. Next slide. Turn around complete, the car heads off for another route, and a red car turning right from the A15 is following. Next slide. Then two more cars are following. Why are so many cars turning into Beaufort Drive? Going where? Through the residential rat room. Next slide. This zebra crossing is close to the junction, is well used and a blessing when and if the traffic stops to let you cross. Next slide. To enrich the recipe at this road junction, please add. Next slide. Drivers, cyclists and pedestrians of all ages from 113 new homes and 22 apartments going to work, school or anywhere else from the edge of the town. Add the delivery driver vans that constantly pull over anywhere to deliver a parcel. Add visitors to an 80 bed care home, a care home minibus out on a visit, shifts of staff for an 80 bed care home, food and other consumables to supply those 80 residents and the 22 retirement apartments and their staff, trades vehicles completing repairs and offering services, hundreds more people living in the property built off Beaufort Drive and emergency vehicles. Um, following on from that, the Pegasus seconds. The Pegasus Traffic Assessment was a one-day survey done on November 13th, 2018. Three and a half hours of counting cars at the single junction A15. Ten months later comes a 99-page report made up of assumptions and countrywide comparisons. Locals know the difficulty turning right out onto Beaufort Drive on the A15 North Road in the morning. And as quoted from Pegasus Traffic Assessment, they predict over 1,400 cars will pass the A15 junction in the morning's rush hour. That, that's the initial three minutes. Thank you. That's one car every 2.6 seconds. So of the 64 cars they predict turning right and 52 cars turning left, they don't actually quote how long it will they will be waiting for a safe gap at the junction. Also, the survey did not study the route of the extra uncounted traffic that local res residents usually use. The locals avoid the A15 junction by travelling via Broadlands Avenue, Stanley Street, Beach Avenue and St Gilbert's Road, which has become a rat run. This could easily become the new exit route for the trade vans and construction vehicles during construction and also to the new traffic once built. An articulated lorry will need both lanes of the A15 and Beaufort Drive to turn into or exit the estate, which will cause chaos in the mornings with both traffic A15 and local cars trying to exit the junction for the school and work commute. Uh, the construction lorry will drive down Beaufort Drive by established family homes and then by the green space on the left hand side with family homes on the right. This green space is often used as a play area for the children that live nearby should we not be considering their safety. The construction vehicle will then approach the neck of the site entrance whereby the houses are closed to the road and residents need to park their cars on the roadside. This will mean the construction lorry will not be able to access the site unless the parking is prohibited for current residents who wish to park outside their own home. How will this work for emergency services? Developers have suggested a turning space within the site for construction traffic as a solution. Will they put the road into the site for so that all tradesmen park their vehicles off Beaufort Drive. Is every contractor going to respect the North Road Beaufort Drive construction route for the traffic and park on site? This is a huge disruption for the residents over a four year period with one access exit route. For the traffic impact alone, is this really a sensible location to pass planning for a large development in terms of safety? Practically 
I'm sorry, practicality and fairness to the Bourne residents, especially those that reside on Beaufort Drive. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much indeed. Um, <laughs> the next speaker we have is Jane Connolly. I don't have a script for you, Jane. Have you oh, provided? I did send it to her. Yeah, no, I, I did email it. Okay, it doesn't seem to be in my papers, but uh, I okay. I apologise. I'll do my best. No. It's on page 20 of your pack, Mr Chairman. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, of course, you see, you've got three minutes on the second application, Jane. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Well, firstly, um, Lynx County Council requisitioned Kingsbury Hill Fox to pull together the demographics for the residential care market in the area. It showed that a staggering um, one third of the beds in South Devon is covered in Bourne. So we supply one third of the beds in Bourne for South Devon District Council at this moment. That may change shortly when Elysia decide to open their care home in Stamford with 74 beds which I believe may have been delayed. And also there's some proposed development in Grantham for a 64, 68 bed care home as well, which will help. However, th those care homes are not needed in Bourne at all. They probably needed hospital. This with the Ministry of Housing and Communities um, at all, because it is too far removed there is, uh, we are not, we do not have a cottage hospital or, or that kind of amenity. We are 30 minutes away from Peterborough City Hospital, which takes, um, you know, only 15 minutes if it was further south in the region, which is, I believe, where the beds may be needed. Um, the longevity has ceased to rise, so Alicia's demographics are slightly wrong because it all altered in 2011 when it plateaued and I've produced evidence alongside this to, to prove it from the ONS and the World Health Organization. It's not going to provide any extra jobs in the town, I can assure you. It is going to actually take jobs away from the existing care homes that have served as well over the years, and that's going to leave them with a gap. It is going to take some casualties with it. What you're going to do, you're going to, you're going to rake one in order to get the new one up and running. Then these people are out on a limb in a corner field away from the town away from the amenities which do not meet the ministry of housing and communities uh, document that they they requisite for um, a care home of this size the size is really questionable as well and i can assure you we do not need those apartments we've got six on the market at the moment one of which has been on there since november 2017 okay um, it's just not at all suitable for any kind of commercial use. And some of my peers have obviously, I've listened to them, have covered quite a bit as to what I was going to cover in here. We cannot afford them because uh, their price ranges uh, based at the Stamford one is £285,000 for the apartment, whereas, we, you know, in Bourne, we can't sell them to £160,000 on the Croft and £225,000 in Browning Court. So if they're not going, how can we afford these? This is not for local people. You'll be bringing people in from other towns. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Um, I'm going to uh, uh, Mr. Hodgson to uh, speak to both applications. I'm going to plead for a very quick comfort break.
Apologies for that, Andrew, uh, an emergency. <laughs> okay, if uh, you'd like to start with your six minutes, sir. Chairman, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. We need to do a roll call to make sure all members are back, in, obviously following the adjournment before Mr Hodgson continues. Otherwise, there's a risk some members may miss some of the presentation. Okay, I was hoping nobody had noticed I disappeared. Okay. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Bob Adams. Present. Councillor David Bellamy. Present. Councillor Harish Bisnal Singh. I am present. Councillor Helen Crawford. Present. Councillor Phil Dill. Present. Councillor Dill. Yes, present. Thank you. Councillor Mike Exton. Councillor Exton. Councillor Rosemary Cabry Brown. Councillor Cabry Brown. Councillor Penny Milnes. Present. Councillor Charmaine Morgan. I can hear, but I can't see anything. Thank you. Councillor Robert Reed. Present. No screen. Councillor Ian Selby. Yeah, present. Please note, Mr Chairman, I've indicated in the chat to ask a question to the officer. Thank you. Councillor Jackie Smith. Has been noted. Present. Councillor Mrs. Judy Smith. Councillor Mrs. Judy Smith. Present. Thank you. Councillor Mike Exton. Mike Exton, are you there, please? Jackie, would you mind turning your microphone off, please? Oh, sorry. Okay. Councillor Cabry Brown. Yes, at long last I've got a picture <laughs> and I'm unmuted. Thank you, Councillor. It looks as though I'm still waiting for a response from Councillor Mike Exton, Chairman. While we're trying to make sure Councillor Exton can hear us, for those members who haven't got an image, have you got an option to hide stage? Is it because that's still sitting covering if you have an option to hide stage click on that and hopefully that should take you back to the normal view that works joe <laughs> charmaine have you got your screen back yes you have marvelous yeah thanks so we're still waiting for councillor exton mike Mike did say to me he might have a phone call from the hospital and he might have to uh, leave us for a while. Can we give him one more call? And if not, I think we'll have to proceed, Joe, and uh, ask him not to take part in the uh, debate or vote. And enjoy, Joe. Sorry about this, Andrew. It's okay. Just while we're waiting, Mr Chair, I just want to point out one of the plans was incorrect in your committee report. I just want to make sure that um, you, you refer to the correct one when you go into your debate. So plan, I think it was 13, the layout was an old one, but plan 14, the one after it with all the landscape on, that's the correct one. So if you remove plan 13 or... And just yeah, that's got the old layout. It doesn't have the footpath and things we put in around the outside, but the, the next plan along in the agenda, 14, which shows all the coloured up landscape, that's got it in, so that's the correct layout you should be referring to. Thank you, Andrew. Councillor Exton, have you... Been... 
Well, I do propose we carry on, Joe, and uh, we'll have to ask Mike not to take part in the uh, debate or vote. OK, Andrew. OK, I, I'll try and get both through these as quickly as I can. So I'm going to do the residential one first, if I may, please. Say that. So Longhurst are extremely disappointed we have come in front of this committee today with an officer recommendation for refusal, having worked with officers for the last 10 months to deliver what we consider is a highly um, quality scheme. Whilst we respect the officer's professional view, we do not consider in light of the current national housing crisis and need for affordable housing that this is the right recommendation based on the planning balance of benefits which this scheme will deliver against a single conflict with a local plan. The Conservative government's remit on delivering housing is very clear. Local authorities should be approving housing schemes wherever possible, where they are deemed to be sustainable locations and where they are meeting specific housing need, irrespective of whether there's a five-year housing land supply or not. Furthermore, the delivery of affordable homes is given an even higher priority uh, uh, by the government with 100% affordable housing schemes classed as substantial benefits where they are meeting identified housing need. South Castevan and specifically Bourne have clear housing need for affordable housing. There are currently over 600 entries on the SKDC waiting list and of those 153 have direct connections to Bourne, many of whom are in the top priority need category, meaning they're either homeless or living currently in unfit housing. And yet this council are failing these people and desperately by potentially refusing this and other affordable housing, housing schemes over the recent months, despite the clear guidance from government. According to figures provided by SKDC housing team, there have been no affordable houses delivered in board in 2020. As you're all aware, SKDC is set to benefit from the scheme by taking um, 35 of the units to help address this unacceptable delivery rate and meet the needs of your community, yet we still have a recommendation for refusal. The position might be more acceptable if alternative sites were available through the local plan. They are not. The local plan has relied upon the neighbourhood plan to identify housing sites to come forward and deliver them. The neighbourhood plan has failed to do this and made no real progress. The site was identified as a su suitable housing site through early stage of the local plan and officers agree, as set out in your committee report, that this is a sustainable location for development and the proposed scheme represents a high quality design which is well related to the settlement when taken together. The reason for refusal states the conflict with SP4 criteria A, we don't have substantial local support. We accept that the application has raised some local objections, however this is not a reason to refuse the application. We must look at what the objections relate to, not just the volume of objections. The application has no statutory objections against it, so we must ask what the objector is objecting to. All that is left to object to, therefore, is that we don't want an affordable housing scheme in this location. This is not a material consideration in assessing a planning application. I would therefore encourage members to fully support this application. The application is acceptable in terms of location, design, and most importantly, delivering affordable housing to meet the seconds. needs of residents of South Stephen. It is fully supported by SKDC DC housing team. And by approving this scheme in associated care, we not only delivering much needed housing, but also meeting the SK needs for self-built plots and care home places. Officers have made it clear that if we resubmitted the whole scheme for 100% affordable housing, we would have been compliant with policy SP4. I would therefore recommend encourage members to approve this scheme and deliver the whole scale benefits of this proposal rather than just ones that would come with a housing scheme. That's time. Thank you, Andrew. You're going to move on to... Uh... Yeah, just catch my breath. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. OK, so now moving on to the uh, the care home and um, the proposal in front of you today is for a care home with associated retirement departments, which has been submitted by Alicia Caring against the identified need for care home places in South Castephen. Alicia Caring, a well-known care home developer in South Castephen, are very familiar with the need for care home places. This need is clearly set out in the independent report provided by HPC and submitted with the application. The key conclusions of this report are as follows. The district population is comparatively old. Indeed, the prevalence of most elderly is 85 years and over over is 24 percent higher than national average the number of persons over age of 80, 85 in the district is forecast to double by 2035. secondly when considering the district-wide care home estate in terms of appropriate accommodation ensuite bedrooms with single person occupancy a significant undersupply exists 273 ensuite bedrooms in fact the rising elderly population will take this shortfall to 531 bedrooms by 2025 the majority of the district's care home state is either dated or incorporates converted environment. This has resulted in two key concerns. Firstly, closure of converted facilities over recent years has resulted in twice as many care homes closing as been developed. Secondly, those continuing to operate with converted environment are increasingly unfit for purpose, incorporating shared bedrooms and lacking ensuite facilities. Indeed, of the nine care homes for the elderly within a six mile radius of the site, five incorporate converted dwellings and one was a purpose built over 40 years ago. In light of COVID-19, the onus is on planning officers and councils to facilitate new development. As well as providing private beds, this scheme will deliver a number of local authority beds and provide specialist dementia care unit, which is currently lacking in the district. 
scheme also delivers a number of retirement apartments, allowing uh, allowing uh, uh, partners of patients who are in long-term care to live close to their partner, potentially. The home will also deliver GP consulting room for local GPs to use. And the other major benefit is obviously 75 full and part-time jobs. As can be concluded from the office before, there are no statutory objections to the scheme. Scheme and officers consider that when considered in association with the housing scheme, it's considered to be a sustainable location and design is considered to be of high quality. The principal reason for refusal is, is SP4, and we do not, as we do not have substantial support. However, when we look at the reasons for refusing listed in policy at paragraph 6.2, we must conclude that the objections are not really relevant as the officers have come, confirmed this is a sustainable location and high quality design. It appears that the objections just come down to the fact that people do not want to see development on this site. Looking at the planning balance, we will see the need for a care home place is backed by a professional report, high quality design, sustainable location, a wide number of benefits, including job generation. On the other side of the balance, we have some seconds. objections which carry little weight, given that the planning officers confirm we're in a sustainable location and design is acceptable. I would urge members to approve this scheme and deliver a scheme which delivers a wide range of benefits and meets several needs rather than uh, that rather than waiting for a standalone housing scheme to come back in, which would have an overall less benefits for the overall community. Thank you. Mr Chairman. It's, Thank you, Andrew. Uh, you made me out of breath. <laughs> yes, Mike. Mr Chairman, it's uh, Councillor Exton. I'm back on sound. I could hear everything coming from your end. I could hear you, but I've got no way of contacting you. But everything's settled down and now back full working. So you heard all of the comments from <coughs> Andrew Hodgson and the other speakers? Yeah. So, okay. okay, Mike, thank you very much indeed. So we will now move to uh, the questions. And uh, first of all, are there any questions to the applicant or the agent, please? Councillor Dilks. Councillor Dilks? Yeah, thank you, um, uh, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry, I was just busy going through my paperwork, trying to get my question ready. A question to Andrew, if I may. Yeah. Um, I, I hear what you say, Andrew, that um, um, you, you know you want to sort of question what um, local people are objecting to, but do you accept that there is no clear, um, substantial support for these applications? Uh, yeah, obviously, the, obviously we accept there's been objections that's clear in the in that. But in the planning balance, which is what um, the government are asking council to look at the minute, you've got to look at the wider benefits of the scheme. And policy, yes, it's in policy SP4 that, uh, that but it, as your officer was saying, if, if the if self-built plots hadn't been included in this application, we, and we included those to meet a need of 132 people on your waiting list, if they, if they hadn't, uh, been included, we that element of the scheme, if it was 100% affordable, would have met requirements of, and we wouldn't have needed to have local support because it became an affordable housing scheme. So the only reason that we've got that reason for refusal is the fact that we included the self-build plots in there. Now we think that's a the self-build plots are a big benefit in there. I'm, I'm leaving. I'm just talking about the housing, not the care home element at the moment. But from that point of view, yeah, we we recognise there's. Uh, some objections, but that doesn't rule out the fact that the, all the benefits this is providing, and you look at it in the planning balance, is providing a lot more than um, potentially what we think has been objected to. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Uh, can I remind members we have 10 minutes on this, please? I'm going to try and keep that as close as I can without actually curtailing anything. Joe, are there any other? Councillor Morgan. Councillor Morgan, two. Mr. Hodgson. Yeah, thank you. You mentioned um, that there was a, a defined need for the housing, which contradicts some of the speeches that we've had. Can you explain exactly what research was done regarding defining that need, um, especially given, obviously, you've mentioned the care home, uh, uh, looking at both the housing and also the, the care home, because there have been arguments against that for the Bourne area? Uh, yeah, so in terms of the housing, the, the figures I mentioned, 600 people on the SKDC waiting list were provided by SKDC housing team to us. Um, so that's your own figures. Um, of those 600 people, 153 people, this is information provided by your own housing team, 153 people are waiting uh, for those houses in Bourne. So, and a lot of those are in the top priority categories like homeless or really need those immediately. And so far in 2020, you've delivered no affordable houses in Bourne not a single one it's now november coming up so you can't make an argument there isn't a need there is a need you've got 600 people on the waiting list so 
Um, that's and 153 of them uh, are in Bourne, so that's that would meet the needs of 153 people immediately in your community by building this scheme out effectively in the next 18 months. Uh, in terms of the care home release, you know the uh, uh, know the district very well. There's demand for care home spaces, but not just that. It's the it's the provision of the uh, dementia unit. It's also providing accommodation which upgrades on what's available in Bourne at the moment. A lot of it is old stock, and you can't get ensuite bedrooms. Uh, and everything else so that a new care home like that this will meet the, all of those needs but also upgrade the existing facilities which are available charmaine you want to uh, further follow up very quickly please because other people are looking to speak thank you yes um if i'd like if i can the 153 um you mentioned the need in born you referred to the council waiting list and homelessness um, but that would be for social housing, not affordable housing. They're different. Could you confirm that um, people who are on those lists would actually be able to use the housing provided or would actually it be affordable in the sense that you have to be working in a very good job actually to be able to? No, we've got different ten. We've got obviously different tenures of uh, affordable housing on those and see some of those. Uh, some of the houses will be available to those people directly. Others will be um, your shared ownerships where you've got it. You've got to, so we'd be if you look at the tenure and I think you all had the briefing note uh, sent to you by Longhurst, which break, gives you a breakdown of all of the different tenures that uh, are available on this site. So but there will be social rented, which is managed by Longhurst, who available to these people on that waiting list. Thank you, Andrew. Next uh, member, please. Yeah. Councillor Business Singh. Councillor Business Singh. Harish, please. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Andrew, for your presentations. Um, what I would like to ask just one simple question. What was the reasoning behind allocating all the SKDC or social housing in one corner of the development? Yeah, that's that's, for, that's a fair question. I mean, I think it's important, really important to understand here that all of the houses on this scheme are the same houses. So SKDC's houses aren't different to our houses. Oh, sorry, our, when I want to say our Longhurst houses. They're all the same house type. So you won't be able to recognise any difference between SKDC houses and the, the only reason they're grouped together is because it's easier to manage them that way and it's easier for um, it's easier for transfer of ownership to have them all in one place rather than scattered over. That's, there's no other reason than that because all of the houses are actually the same and of the same quality and the same house builder will be building them all. Will it not be better for it to be interspersed with the other are going to, have to prevent any developments of negligence or slum areas? Harish, I think he's explained that exactly think, the same no, type of houses. Well, I think it's it, it was just it's just a bit. I mean, it's it's a, it's a single housing. So the, the different types of tenure are mixed around, but you can't. It's very difficult to transfer uh, ownership to a uh, to South Cast South Cast even if they're all dotted all over the site. They need to be in a single location. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, any further questions to Andrew? No further indications, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions to the uh, case officer, please? Councillor Selby. Councillor Selby, Ian, please. Thank you very much indeed, Mr Chairman. Um, on a point that I've not heard mentioned so far, um, now I view Google, Google Maps and I've got it uh, viewing at the moment because you get to see the bigger picture um, of an application. Uh, I come from originally a rural area and I'm well aware that how noisy farms can be. Now my questions to the officer is please, and thank you for your presentation, Chris. Um, now on the northwest corner, just outside of the, the where the application is, um, there looks to be a rather large farm. Um, now farms are, I would say, noisy, understandably so, from a working farm. So uh, will that mean that this application uh, will be an urban build directly next to a noisy and sometimes I say smelly as well farms uh, rural area um, so does it go right, um, right up to a farm can you tell me a little bit about the farm please um, and will this mean future noise and smells issues please thank you Thank you, Councillor Selby. Um, I'm happy to, to come back on that one. Um, with regards to that farm to the northwest corner, um, I'm, I haven't been to the, the farm itself. I wasn't the case officer for this application. However, looking at Google Maps, rather than a, a working 
uh, dairy farm or, or sheep farm, for instance, it actually looks to be more equestrian in use. I can see on the Google Maps there's a menage to the, the rear of the farm buildings and a, I, th I think it's called a horse walker, sort of a cylinder where the, the horse sort of exercises in. Um, again, slightly to the north of those farm buildings. So I, 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 we don't foresee any sort of um, odour or, or noise issues from the farm uh, to future residents if the application was, was to be approved. Thank you, Chris. Okay, okay Ian. Okay. Any further questions, please, to the case officer? Joe? No indications, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we'll yeah, move on to. Can, oh. can quick one, please, Mr. Chairman. Okay, hang on, we've got Councillor Milnes Penny. Yes, thank you. Um, could um, Chris. Sorry. Sorry, we've lo we lost you there, Penny. Could you start again? I'm having a few problems today. Um, could Chris just explain to us um, how this technicality of the self-build plots, if they were removed and it became a 100% affordable site, how that would affect um, any decision? And also, could he explain what we all class in uh, planning terms as local need? Is it SKDC's need or is it Bourne's need? Thank you. Chris? Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Mills. Um, on the self-build plots, if I can take that first, if I may, please. Um, so effectively, that, that's going back to policy SP4. So policy SP4 has this, this need to meet all the criteria of SP4. And that's where this uh, criteria is about the, um, the community support for the proposal. However, um, policy SP4 also includes sort of a, a get out clause, if you like, to meeting all those criteria. And that's if the site is solely a, um, a rural exception site, so solely affordable housing. So with this case, because the, the three self-built plots have been added into the scheme, it's not solely affordable housing and therefore doesn't meet SP4. However, um, it's it's not quite sort of as simple as that because if, if you sort of just took this application on its own, so S192111, and removed the self build plots, then yes, technically you've got a rural exception site. But then we would have a problem because we the care home is not supported also. So if you took the care home out, this scheme would then sort of have this this sort of missing corner, if you like, to that sort of top right hand corner if the care home wasn't wasn't to be approved. So then we'd say that that's not that's not sort of adjoining the built form of the settlement and it would be um, harmful to the character and appearance of the area if they weren't sort of approved together, if you like, because uh, it'd have this sort of missing chunk out of it. And um, so hopefully that answers the question of self-build plots. The, the second point you made in terms of the local need, I mean, local need is generally um, whole district need because um, that's what the local plan will set out. Um, obviously, we can drill down much further uh, locally than that. So in this case, the, um, the, the housing officers at the council have, have stated this, this local need for Bourne, um, of the, you know, but that's by scrutinising their, their own waiting list. Uh, but generally, local need is, is generally on a district-wide basis. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Harris, you want to come back quickly, please? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Just a quick question, Chris. You know, um, there's one thing. D did you do any further study with regards to the pre uh, presentations on the uh, drainage or the water flow, uh, uh, the rate of the water flow? And second question is also on the self-built plot. Uh, or will it be of the same type of houses or free design according to the owner's own wishes. Chris? Uh, thank you, Councillor Business. And thank you, Chairman. Uh, so your first point on the on the drainage, uh, there wasn't any follow-up um, with the applicant on that. However, obviously the, the relevant consultees were consulted, so the statutory consultees of the, the lead local flood authority, the county council, um, Anglian Water. Um, they didn't recommend any refusal on the, the main applications so of the 110 dwellings and the three self-built plots. They, um, they considered that any drainage issues as a result of that proposal could be overcome through suitable planning conditions. So there's no recommended refusal drainage-wise on that application. On the, the other one, the S192134, um, for the care home, you'll see on the additional items paper that there is a recommendation for refusal on the lack of drainage information on that application. 
um, and then your um, sort of can you please remind you of your second point after drainage. Oh, the self-build plots. Um, so with regards to the self-build plots, they effectively, um, they're just a, a red line outline for those three plots on the plan. There's no further details. The idea is with self-build plots that then um, an individual would would take on that plot and build to sort of their own design and specification. We can sort of set parameters around um, you know, height, width, size of plot, for instance, but they would look They'd, have, they'd be individually tailored effectively to the, the purchaser of those individual plots. They wouldn't look exactly like all the other houses proposed as part of the site. Thank you, Chris. Are there any more questions to the case officer? No? Will's indicated that he'd like to speak, and we have three minutes of this section left. Thank you, Joe. Will? Thank you, Chairman. Uh, be before members go into the debate, I thought I'd, I'd j just uh, make some comments uh, uh, for members to be um, aware of. Um, I'll make some comments in respect of uh, um, the comments made by Mr. Fodson on behalf of the applicants. Um, he talks about uh, the benefits of the plan, um, but uh, he doesn't mention the fact that uh, uh, the local planning authority provided pre-application advice to uh, uh, the applicants, and this was um, not positive in as much as it, it outlines the the, the, uh, the the difficulties they would have in developing this site, and so they proceeded uh, anyway. Um, and so um, I'm surprised that they're surprised that uh, this recommendation is before members. Um, this application is contrary to the development plan, and SP4 is a key policy. Um, and he talks about the need for affordable housing, and uh, the local plan uh, examination uh, was clear, and the inspector was clear that uh, the role, it's the role of the neighbourhood plan and the, and the uh, parish council to, to produce and identify uh, these additional sites. And that's clear. It's, it's not sort of maybe or uh, could be, but it's, it's clearly stated in the, by the inspector, and, and it, it's clear in the policy. Um, he goes on to say there are no statutory objections, um, but there is a significant amount of local community objection, and, and that is significant. Um, volume, he says, um, that, that is clear that there is significant local objections. He then goes on to say, well, they don't tell us why they're objecting. Well, quite frankly, I, I was listening to, the, to, to some of the speakers there. Um, members of the community and, and uh, the parish, and they were quite clear about their concerns. It wasn't a, a sort of NIMBY reaction. That they, they, they specified um, the key issues and concerns. They mentioned sustainability, um, and they mentioned traffic issues. Yes, uh, the, the local county, uh, the county council, LCC, highways uh, did not um, proffer any objection to one of them and had no comments on the other. But we were reminded by uh, one of the speakers um, that an application in 2011 for 30 houses in this location was refused on highway grounds. And now we're talking about an application for over 100 dwellings or units uh, where they don't um, offer any comments. Now that <laughs> On the on one of the applications, they offer no objection. On the other, they option they they did not comment. And so there may be a, a potential to revisit that because uh, it may be a glaring omission. I'm not a highways expert, but I'd I'd like to look into that in more detail. Um, um, I'm not saying it should be a reason for refusal, but potentially it could be. Um, and so basically. Um, Another, another uh, speaker said it wasn't a sustainable location, and that is a material planning consideration. Um, in, in the officer's report, um, it, it, it says in 7.1.12 that the site is at the edge of Bourne, and it says it's reasonably sustainable uh, with good potential for public transport links. Now. I heard one of the speakers object, um, one of the community uh, speakers, and they said that the nearest um, 
public transport or bus stop is 500 metres. 500 metres for somebody living in a care home is uh, out of reach, I would uh, suggest. And so there may be potential to revisit sustainability um, because, quite frankly, there are issues that have cropped up today in today's discussion by uh, the, the people who have uh, taken part, and I think a member should be aware of this. Thanks. Thank you for that, Will. Um, no further questions to the case officer, so we move into debate. Do we have any... Councillor Dilks. Councillor Dilks, Phil, please. Uh, Mr Chairman, thank you. Um, I, I thank everyone for their um, uh, contributions. They're very interesting and, and thank you. I, I listened to, I've got to say, um, the local members who I think have spoke very eloquently on this. Um, there is clearly no community support. There's no de been no demonstration of that. Every speaker, uh, apart from the applicant, has shown there is a complete lack of community support. And that's the basis on which the refusal is recommended by the officers, which I have to say I will be supporting. Um, I'm happy to leave it to local members, born members, to make that proposal. Uh, I would just like to say something that will uh, just comment on what uh, the head of planning has just uh, said. I'd, I'd already planned to, but it's once again, once again, we've got, um, you know, a proposal um, for what I might call a substantial development, 100 and whatever houses it is, and an 80 bed, um, if I might say, oversized institution. Um, um, on the site, and, and it is the effect. What concerns me almost more than anything else, but I, but I uh, hear what local members are saying, but it, the, um, the effect, the impact on the A15, again and again and again, and almost every planning meeting that we hold, we seem to pour more vehicles onto the A15 corridor between, uh, you know, Bourne, north of Bourne, the villages north of Bourne, Morton, and so on, um, through Bourne, um, and uh, down the A15 corridor, through Deepings, and into Peterborough. And each time we get the highways saying that the impact would not be severe. Well, somewhere there has to be a tipping point. Now, it seems that we're told that in 2001, there was a tipping point, and it was the highways objected on on the highways grounds. I haven't seen, I don't have the detail of that one in front of me, but it's what what happened. Um, you know, traffic hasn't got any less since um, uh, 2011. It's got much. It's got much more. I, I just wonder when when on earth are we going to do something? Uh, where is the tipping point, and what are we going to do about the A15? corridor, if I can call it that. As I say, I'm happy to leave others to make a proposal, uh, but I will be supporting the officer's recommendations. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Any more speakers in debate, please, Joe? Councillor Reid. Councillor Reid. Robert, please. Uh, thank you very much, Mr Chairman. Um, I would like to um, make two um, separate uh, debate uh, proposals. The first one um, is uh, for the uh, affordable uh, dwellings of 110 um, and that it is clearly uh, shown that they did not take any consultation for the pre-app design, it's, uh, specifically design uh, advice. I endorse the County Council presentation and um, that of uh, district ward councillors, which uh, uh, my previous colleague um, said was eloquently. I, I would um, add to that that it was both precise and correct. I'd therefore like to make a proposal uh, that the officers' uh, policies and recommendation for refusal um, is made, and I look for a seconder. Quite, second, quite separately, on the second application, Lincolnshire County Council's evaluation confirms that there is no care home commitment 
Jane Connolly's presentation as a member of the public also uh, substantiated that. And of course, there is uh, where local care homes vacancies is concerned. Um, that is a policy consideration uh, within planning. The, uh, the dementia um, aspect of uh, that's intended um, uh, as the care facility makes SP4 more poignant because it is on the curtilage and residents uh, that have dementia need including um, so that their dementia doesn't get any worse um, and uh, that is simply not going to be able to happen with the logistics of this site. Drainage from the additional items paper um, it, it, whichever way you evaluate this, um, it is clearly um, um, inadequate um, in its uh, formation as it is presented to us today. And I'd like to um, actually um, take, uh, I'd like to endorse um, our development manager's uh, concerns that he's highlighted in this application. I therefore would uh, wish to make a second proposal uh, to support the officer's uh, policies uh, for refusal and ask for a seconder on the second application being S192134. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you, Robert. First of all, do I have a seconder for S192 treble one? Councillor Pisnell seems indicated in the chat that he would be prepared to second. Thank you for that, Harish. And do I have a second, please, for S192134? Yes, uh, Councillor Judy Smith. Thank you, Judy. Do we have any more members wishing to speak in debate? Councillor Bisnell. That I would like to speak. Um, okay, Judy, carry on. Tonight, I won't be very lengthy. Um, I'd just like to say I fully understand the concerns of the present residents of Beaufort Drive and its offshoots. I live in Gladstone Street and realise the residents' concern when they wish to exit Beaufort Drive, because to exit onto the A15 from any of the turns, um, Gladstone Street, Stanley Street, Beaufort Drive, etc., is quite difficult, especially first thing in the mornings. Um, the A15 becomes more and more busy and the exit time from all of these exits from the X SO garage to Beaufort Drive adds some considerable time to a journey. The site of this application is not appropriate under SP4 in the local plan has been and has been considered undesirable by the Bourne community and town council over the last 10 to 11 years, ruining the outlook onto the natural countryside and the access to Bourne woods and the lovely walks and wildlife, very essential to a great many people in the times in which we are living. And I would like to support Councillor Reid's proposal of refusal for both applications, actually. But Thank I know you. that Harish has already done one of them. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Judy. Are there any more speakers in debate, please, Joe? Harish, Councillor Business saying Harish. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll be brief because most of the uh, points has, has been made. I would make an additional point. My main concerns about this application is the social segregation on, on the sites of the social housings and also with the amount of traffic that have been adequate, adequately made. But the other thing which I would like with regards to Section 106 contributions for 110 houses, Mr. Chairman, here it's been out only 72 1,600 pounds. I don't think that's sufficient because the, so the care, the medical facilities is an ongoing forever and as the children grows, they will need more and more uh, uh, help. But secondly, we don't seem to make any contribution or ask for any one of the contributions for social care, Mr. Chairman. I think this is one thing we need to really look seriously about making that available as well, because there's more and more senior citizens or elderly person we have got in our community that probably will require those. Thank you, Harish. 
Any more contributors to, deb to debate, Joe? Yeah, apologies, Councillor Morgan's just popped in at the bottom and I'd not spotted her. Thank you. Councillor Morgan, Charmaine, please. Yeah, th yes, thank you. Um, normally, I would be minded to support a scheme like this, but I think that there's been really compelling evidence in this case um, to, to challenge this development. Um, and if there was to be any way forward, I think that um, obviously with regards to the highways, that junction would need to be um, uh, have some form of treatment from uh, county and funding going into that. Um, I know the concerns of the residents. I think that we seem to have an issue here and, and it's an issue for Bourne to resolve that if we have got a need for this type of housing, which we, we appear to have, um, th there is a concern we don't yet have land allocated that developers can apply to use. And that's led to this situation where a non-suitable site ha ha has been um, put forward by a developer. And I think we need to resolve that as soon as possible. That's a policy decision and action required i'd say urgently having residents desperately needing homes uh, in my case list at the moment um but one point that was made by the officer i'd like to add and i'd like to thank councillor selby i spotted it earlier and forgot to mention it the farm um if if horses are there anybody who's ever been uh, anywhere near a horse uh, 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 your equestrian centre will know the smells there in the summer especially are absolutely horrendous so to try and imply there would be no implication of it neighbouring a farm um, especially with horses is, is just to be honest ludicrous thank you thank you Charmaine I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to move to a vote are there any more speakers Joe members to speak no more members, Mr. Chairman. Will's just asked to come back in, if he may. Very briefly, Will, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I think before you put it to the vote, I, I think, uh, given the comments that have been made by members and by the appellants, uh, by the applicant's agent, I, I think it's uh, um, wise to consider whether you want to consider um, uh, adding uh, some more reasons for refusal um, in view of the discussion. I have been persuaded um, during this meeting and debate that the site uh, is not sustainable and that uh, particularly for elderly people um, who, who are sort of over half a mile away from the nearest bus stop and for people without uh, living in affordable houses, possibly without private transport. And so the site being at the edge of town and not able to, uh, for, for residents potentially to, to, to integrate, I think is potentially not sustainable and that is a material and a key uh, reason for, for refusal. I won't comment about the highways issue, um, but there is potential for reviewing that, but um, we, we don't have sufficient evidence from highway engineers at this st stage. Thank you. Thank you, Will. Are our members are happy to accept the uh, further item for refusal on sustainability? Very much so, Mr Chairman. Yes, yeah. Mr Chairman, I will uh, add that to my proposal on both applications. Thank you, Thank on you his can. advice. Thank you, Councillor Reid. Can we move to the vote, please, members? So we've had, uh, we're going to take, we have to take the vote to one agenda item at a time. So S19 to treble one, be moved by uh, Councillor Reid, seconded by Harris Business Singh, that we support the officer recommendation to refuse for refusal. Shelley, could you do the uh, the uh, vote, please? Certainly. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor David Bellamy. For. Councillor Harish Biznalsing. For. Councillor Phil Dilks. Uh, for refusal. Councillor Mike Exton. For refusal. <laughs> Councillor Mrs Rosemary Cabry brown Councillor Cabry Brown. Councillor Penny Mills. For refusal. Councillor Charmaine Morgan. For. Councillor Robert Reid. For refusal. Councillor Ian Selby. For refusal. Councillor Jackie Smith. 
for refusal. Thank you. Councillor Mrs Judy Smith. For refusal. Chairman Councillor Bob Adams. For refusal. And Councillor Rosemary Cabry Brown. Councillor Cabry Brown. Councillor Cabry Brown, your microphone's been unmuted, so if you're able to hear us, please can you cast your vote? Can you hear us, Rosemary? We'll take that as no vote from Councillor Cabry Brown, Mr Chairman, and ask for IT to try and make contact with her again. Thank you, Joe. We move on to uh, S192134, again proposed by Councillor Reid, seconded by Councillor Judy Smith. Uh, are we ready to take a vote on that one, please? Uh, Chairman, can we uh, say that the motion's carried on the last one, please? First. Oh, I do beg your pardon, yes. <laughs> the the, uh, the vote was carried, yes. Uh, sorry for yeah. interfering with your chairing of the meeting, sir. On, on this occasion, I'll let you off. <laughs> okay. can, can, we, can we then move, please, to uh, S192134, as I say, proposed by Councillor Reid, seconded by Councillor Judy, Judy Smith. Smith. Can we go to the vote, please? Thank you, Chairman. Councillor David Bellamy. Four. Harish Bisnav Singh. Four. Councillor Phil Dilks. Uh, four refusal. Councillor Mike Exton. Four. Councillor Rosemary Cabry Brown. Councillor Penny Mills. Four. Councillor Charmaine Morgan. Four. Councillor Robert Reed. Four refusal. Ian Selby. Four refusal. Councillor Jackie Smith. Councillor Jackie Smith. Four refusal. Thank you. Councillor Mrs Judy Smith. Four refusal. Chairman Councillor Bob Adams. Four refusal. Do we have Councillor Rosemary Cabry Brown? With the exception of Councillor, Councillor Rosemary Cabry Brown, I think that was unanimous. Okay, uh, before we move on to item agenda item six, I suggest we have a quick two minute comfort break. Thank you. While we're adjourning, please can we check whether the public speakers for the next application are present? Um, if you are present, please can you uh, just confirm by saying something like present. We should have Councillor Ashley Baxter. Uh, yeah. uh, yes, I'm, yes thank, I'm here. Thank you very much. David Shelton. David, I can see you're in the meeting, so I've just unmuted your microphone. If you can hear me, please, can you confirm? Okay. Pamela Steele. So I'm mute. Hello? Hello, is that Pamela? Yes, Pamela Steele, yes. Lovely. Thank you ever so much. We've got you loud and clear. Right. Um, Dr Chandra Mystery. Yes, I can I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can indeed. That's wonderful. Thank you very much. Right. Lynette Swinburne. Yep, yeah, I'm here. Wonderful. We will just try and get hold of David Shelton then. Thank you all very much.
Yep. While we're waiting for people to return, can I thank members for their cooperation in uh, limiting themselves to speaking, etc. Very, very helpful. Thank you. Shelley, can we start a roll call, please? Shelley, are you back with us? Shelley, are you back with us? Shelley, are you back with us, please? Shelley, can you hear me? Shelley? Speak to me. Um, so whether she contacted me, um, well, I've just turned on the mic. David, uh, David, can you turn your microphone off, please? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's OK. Shelley? It looks like she has just rejoined the meeting. Shelley, can you hear me? We can move on with the roll call, Mr Chairman, if that would be helpful. Yeah, of course you can. OK, we can't contact Shelley to do a roll call, but Joe Toomey is going to do it for her. Okay. Thank you, Joe. Councillor Adams. Present. Councillor Mrs. Judy Smith. Present. Councillor David Bellamy. Present. Councillor Harish Bisnouth Singh. Are you there, Harish? Councillor Crawford. Present. Councillor Phil Dilks. Present. Councillor Mike Exton. Present. Councillor Mrs Rosemary Cabry Brown. Councillor Penny Milnes. Present. Councillor Charmaine Morgan. Present. Councillor Robert Reed. Present. Councillor Ian Selby. Present. Councillor Jackie Smith. Present. Okay. Councillor Bisnott Singh just joined. Thank you very much. Thank you, Harish. Councillor Cabry Brown. OK, yeah, wonderful. Thank you. We will carry on without Councillor Cabry Brown. And if she's able to rejoin, we'll count her in at that point and she can determine where she's in for the full item. Thank you for that, Joe. Uh, before we move on to item agenda, agenda item six, we need just to check the, the uh, public speakers, please. Councillor Baxter. Present. Uh, David Shelton. Present. Pamela Steele. Pamela Steele. Present. Thank you. And Dr. Chandra Mystery. Uh, present. Thank you. And Lynette Swinburn, Swinburne for the applicant. Present. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, 
And I think this one is in the hands of uh, Phil Moore, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm just going to upload the presentation, and if you could let me know when it is on the screen. Thank you. You might be in the background, as well. Pam, could you turn your microphone off, please? Sorry about the delay, Chairman. It's all right, Phil. You can't control the equipment. Oh, that's it. It should work now. So if you can let me know if and when that appears on the screen. Yeah, I think it's going to load, Phil. Not got it yet, but the symbol was there. Yeah, there we go. Okay, Phil. Excellent. Uh, OK, thank you, Chairman. So my name is Phil Moore, um, Special Projects Manager at SKDC, and I'm also the case officer for this application. So this application is for the construction of up to 260 dwellings and associated infrastructure. It's an outline application, um, all matters reserved except for access, which is included for consideration. And the site is off Millfield Road in Market Deeping. So the key issues to consider are firstly the principle of development, highways and traffic, impact on the character and appearance of the area, and finally residential amenity. So I'm just going to go through a few slides showing the application site. Uh, this, this is the site location plan. Uh, it's a little bit confusing because it faces, the, the top of the screen faces east rather than north. This one, I think, shows it a bit better. This is the site in its wider context. This one is properly orientated towards the north. And as you can see, site is on the western edge of the built-up area of Market Deep in Sandwich between Millfield Road, which is a kind of rural country lane, uh, and the A15 bypass. Uh, these next two plans are illustrative plans submitted by the applicant showing how the site could potentially be built out. None of this is set in stone, they're, they're purely for indicative purposes only. So this one shows potential developable areas in the kind of cream colour and uh, potential areas of green space shown in green. And this one is a bit more detailed showing how the road arrangement could work and uh, how the development parcels will be divided up. And in the far uh, right hand top corner of the drawing, you'll see an arrow, which is where the access to the site would be from Millfield Lane. Uh, and there would need to be some improvements to that part of Millfield Lane from Stamford Road to enable that access to, to work. So now I'm just going to show a few photographs of the site just to give you an idea of what it looks like and its character. Um, now this is looking from a gateway along Millfield Road, which as I said is a kind of a, it has a country lane appearance. Looking into the site, the trees in the background are all part of the landscape bund along the A15. The site, uh, when I visited, was just a, a grass field. It wasn't set out for any kind of crops. This is looking northwards up Millfield Road from the junction with Stamford Road. 
Uh, this junction would obviously have to be improved or upgraded to facilitate access to the site and the, the very first part of Millfield Road would have to be widened. And this is the, a bit further up Millfield Road, kind of showing you the, the character of that road, which, as I mentioned before, has a kind of country lane character. Although there are a few houses that are served by that road, generally speaking, it has a very rural uh, aspect with some mature trees along the western boundary and hedgerows. Again, another one looking into the site from a gateway on Millfield Road. Again, inside the site, looking towards the, the trees adjacent to the bypass. Some of the similar shots panning round to the north. And that's looking eastwards from within the site towards Millfield Lane. As you can see, there are a number of mature trees uh, and a hedgerow along that road, which give the edge of the town a very rural aspect. And then just a final couple of shots looking southwest. And this is looking south from the top end of Millfield Road across the field in the foreground is not part of the site, but beyond that is the application site. So very quickly, um, evaluation. So as I said before, it's an outline application with the details of access included. Matters of scale, layout, landscaping and appearance would all be dealt with by future reserve matters applications if this was approved. Generally speaking, the proposal doesn't have unacceptable environmental amenity or highway safety or traffic impacts. Um, education, health, affordable housing would be secured by a 106 if it was deemed to be acceptable in all of the ma matters. The site is, however, an unallocated site on the edge of town, so it falls to be um, assessed under policy SP4. And one of the key components of SP4 is that development should, or an applicant should demonstrate through a community consultation that there is substantial community support for uh, the development. Uh, in this case, it's clear that there is not substantial community support uh, as set out in the report. Uh, neither is there an overriding need. And as you will see in the additional items paper, I've added a, an additional criteria of SP4, uh, which relates to there has to be a need, dem demonstrable need to um, justify a uh, proposal under SP4. Uh, just uh, before I go any further, just a couple of additional items. We have received one additional representation from a member of the public. All the issues raised have already been raised and discussed in the main report. We've also had a letter from Sir John Hayes, MP, um, which sets out support for the Deepings Neighbourhood Plan. Or the, the draft deepens neighbourhood plan and aspirations to designate this site as a green space. Uh, and just on that issue of the deepens neighbourhood plan, in the report it refers to the deepens neighbourhood plan not having gone for examination. Things have moved on. It, the examination is now um, underway. There are some outstanding objections and unresolved issues relating to policies uh, relating to green space, and particularly the policy that would allocate this site as a green space in the neighbourhood plan. As a result, the inspector or the examiner has raised some questions and uh, asked for some clarification on that particular policy or draft policy and a public hearing will now take place on that issue. So as it stands at the moment, although the plan is under examination, policies relating to green space do have outstanding objections and unresolved issues, so therefore can be given very little, if any, weight at this time. So um, 
onto the final paragraph on, on the slide in front of you. There is a fundamental policy conflict here, conflict here in that uh, there is no demonstrable substantial community support or overriding need. Uh, officers are of the view that this site is capable of being developed uh, with an appropriate design, landscaping, etc., without harmful landscape or environmental impacts. However, if members were to take a different view, uh, if, for example, members consider this site to be an important uh, part of the setting of the town and to have uh, you know, value as uh, a uh, particularly important piece of open space and that development would be detrimental to this character and appearance of the area, that it wouldn't be unreasonable for, for, for members to take that view. So finally, uh, or in conclusion, this application is recommended for refusal for the reasons set out in the additional items paper. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Phil. We move on to public speakers. And the first public speaker is the District Councillor, Councillor Ashley Baxter, please. You have, you have three minutes, Ashley. Uh, thank, thank you. Do you have my slides? Uh, Chairman, I'm just going to upload um, Councillor Baxter's slides. This may take um, a few okay, seconds. Phil. Yep. And, and I've marked in the script where the slides change. So hopefully, um, if, if Phil's in charge of it, he can move on at the correct time. Uh, um, yeah. You might, uh, if possible, could you just give me a prompt, uh, Councillor Baxter? I haven't got yeah, the, yeah. the script in front of me. Uh, OK, OK. Um, well. So if you could let me know when the presentation um, I, appears. I can't, see, I can't see anything. Yep, we're on our way, Phil. Yeah, we can see it, Phil. Ready to go? I can yeah. see it. Can everybody see the comments on Millfield Road application slide? Yes, you can. Yes, yes. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Mine not loaded yet. Yes, it's still loading. Loaded now. Thank you, Harris. Yes. Okay, Ashley, thank you. OK, uh, thank you very much for listening to me. I'm Ashley Baxter. I'm one of the three district councillors representing the market in West Deeping Ward, where the mill field is located. Uh, next slide, please. All three district councillors for the ward oppose the development of the mill field, conservative and independent alike. The conservative county councillor is also opposed to the scheme, as is the conservative MP, Sir John Hayes. Here's a picture of uh, Sir John Hayes with a load of people. I can't see that next slide. There it is. There it is. Um, there's Sir John Hayes uh, at an event organised by Friends of Millfield recently. Um, we're ready for the next slide now. Um, the field has been used for a variety of community uses for over 100 years, including football matches, the Deepings Agricultural Show, as well as the ongoing recreational activities such as jogging, walking and exercising dogs. Um, I have supported the Mill Friends of Millfield from the outset in opposing development on this much loved, publicly owned open space. I assisted with the Village Green application, which was sadly rejected by the Council Council, and I've been involved with, in the various community consultations about the land. Next slide, please. I suspect the County Council will try to present the objectors to this application as NIMBYs. There are only 18 houses on Millfield Road, but Friends of Millfield, Friends of Millfield has over a thousand subscribers from a large area, not just the area near the site. For example, I regularly use the mill field for running and cycling, and I live more than a mile away. Furthermore, if it was simply a matter of not in my backyard, then the village green application wouldn't have got out of the gate, uh, let alone go to a four-day public inquiry. The Friends of Millfield have played everything by the book. They have positively and proactively engaged with SKDC at every stage of the process. Site allocations, local plan, neighbourhood plan, village green application, which was tremendously hard work. 
And were it not for this pesky pandemic, the neighbourhood plan now would have been completed. The only people that are holding it up are the county council that obviously have a, a state uh, with this particular application. That's all that's holding it up because of their, I want to say, greed. Um, residents from across the Deepings turned up to the so-called community listening event, uh, which resulted in 550 responses, of which more than 90 percent stated the current application would have no benefit at all to market deeping. Friends of Millfield have lobbied their MPs and councillors to explain why this, the last accessible patch of countryside, the last accessible patch of, so last slide please, uh, I've got two more slides there, um, could you skip to, to the, the, the last one, um, the slides are not keeping up with the talk. Um, uh, I'm delighted officers are recommending refusal, we've got plenty of other sites for houses in the deepings, there's 600 on one site alone. Nobody wants this application, which is a willful act of wanton vandalism against the countryside by the County Council. Uh, reason, we need more reasons to refuse it, though, than just that people oppose it. Look at why they want to oppose it, which are the reasons on this slide. It's on a greenfield site, it's contrary to the local plan, it's a publicly accessible amenity, there are harmful impacts on character appearance at the west, western gateway to the town, and the potential effect of 260 houses all trying to dump onto the roundabout at the same time is going to cause traffic problems. So, I'm sorry, my, li my three minutes are up, but please, please refuse this application on all of the above grounds. Thank you, Ashley. Could I now call on David Shelton from Deepings Town Council, please? <clears throat> Thank you, Bob. Uh, can you hear me? Sorry, yes, I can. Fine. Um, I'm uh, David Shelton, Chairman of the Deepings Neighbourhood Plan, which has been referred to there. The plan was formally submitted in July to the Local Planning Authority, South Coast Even District Council, who have completed their Regulation 16 consultation. In Regulation 17, it's now been considered by the independent examiner who studied it and all the supporting documents. He's visited the neighbourhood accompanied for two days to view the plan area, Subsequently, he has submitted to us and SKDC his clarification note, which identifies any unacceptable content and any f further required clarification on specific items. Millfield is designated in the plan policy 14 as local green space, and Millfield Road is designated in the plan policy 12 as a green lane with their statutory implications. And these have been accepted in principle by the clarification note, but there will be, as was mentioned earlier on, uh, a, a public inquiry to uh, uh, clarify uh, the particularly the local green space. The plan policy states local green spaces which afford a high level of protection are designated as they are considered very special to the community and green lanes shall be protected from development which would have had, had an adverse impact on the character of the area concerned. Finally, I'd like to point out, as has been mentioned before, if it wasn't for COVID-19, the Deepings Neighbourhood Plan referendum would now have taken place and the plan would already be made. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, David. Uh, Pamela Steele, please, who will be speaking against the proposal. Pamela? Chairman, I'm just going to upload some, some uh, images that go with... Uh, uh, Pamela Steele's uh, speech. Thank you, Phil. Right, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Pamela. F uh, Phil's just loading your uh, your images up. Right, thank you. This should be coming up any second now. Yes, we've got the first image, Phil. Thank you. OK, thanks. Shall I start then? Yes, Shall please, Pamela. Now? Yes, please, yeah. Pamela. Is, OK, hi. Pamela, if, Hello. if you could just let me know when, when you want me to forward the slide on to the next one. Yeah, I will this, do. This thank three you. three images. Thank you. OK, thank you. Right, hello. My name is Pamela Steele. I'm the chair of the Friends of Millfield, and I object to this application. Millfield is grassland and is historically and culturally important to our town and its residents. It has been used once a year for community events for over 100 years. And this slide here just shows one of the um, 
newspaper articles from 1904, which was the 22nd annual event. This was uh, an event run by the Oddfellows Charity, which held annual galas on the site for the local community. Between the wars, there's evidence of intervillage football matches held, and after World War II, of course, the Deepings Agricultural Show was held on Millfield every June until 2013. Can I have the next slide, please? Mrs. McGrady, um, the National Trust Director, recently stated that the coronavirus lockdown had clearly shown that people want and need access to nature-rich green space near where they live. Millfield is our nature-rich green space, and it's important we don't lose it to development. The inspector for the recent Village Green inquiry for Millfield, Martin Edwards, concluded in his report that the site has been used for over 20 years by a significant number of local residents for a variety of lawful sports and pastimes, including dog walking, jogging and playing with children. Based on feedback from a local questionnaire, the Deepings Neighbourhood Plan Group submitted Millfield as a local green space in the neighbourhood plan and also Millfield Road as a green lane. That's, that's the slide there, Millfield Road. This is localism at its best and I ask that it should not be ignored or swept aside by powerful councils. South Stephen, as the planning authority, has a legal responsibility to ensure a balance between building an adequate supply of housing and creating a neighbourhood where residents can flourish physically, emotionally, spiritually and mentally. Market Deeping has been expanding over the last 50 years, one housing estate of approximately 250 houses at a time. So pocket size areas of green on each new site has been seen as adequate green space. It is evident that Market Deeping, bordered by the bypass, is almost completely covered by housing estates. Millfield is the one piece of countryside that we have left, and developing this area will be extremely detrimental to the town and its residents. Every day from 5 a.m. onwards, residents use Millfield and Millfield Road in groups and individually for walking, running or relaxing and enjoying nature. People actually go for a walk there. No one goes for a walk on the small patch of greens. 30 seconds. Lincolnshire County Council proposed to open up a small an area of green space on the new development for local residents. This consolation prize would be about as adequate as destroying Bournewoods by building housing estates on it and offering to compensate by planting a small area of trees on a roundabout. We don't want to go for a walk on a housing estate. Lincolnshire County Council who own Millfield are an elected public body. It's not privately owned. Could I have the next slide, please? Please don't permit de development on Millfield. Lincolnshire County Council are the main objectors to the Village Green and the Neighbourhood Plan. Uh, that just shows a, a little collage of um, people, I don't know if you can see that, uh, just walking and running, and that happens all the time around Millfield and down Millfield Lane. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pam. Uh... The next public speaker, uh, and again against the application, is Dr. Chandra Mystery, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I'd just like to say a few words. The historical importance of this green space to the local community has been well established for over a century, and everybody's articulated this quite well. The Millfield site is unique, open green space. Its size, shape, its layout, bordered by mature trees, natural hedgerows supporting diverse wildlife, and the skyline with spectacular sunset. All these qualities are drawn together to create a magnificent atmosphere that gives a sense of peace, tranquility, and mental well-being. This can't be substituted by a restricted green space incorporated within a new development. It may satisfy planning requirement, but not necessarily effective. The current coronavirus pandemic has given a prominence to this green space with a greater exploitation by the residents, recognizing the added benefit of this asset in this changing world. So what is the driver for this development? Well, there is a general recognition for housing needs but that doesn't mean that any available land should be used for this purpose. With equally competing priorities related to the environmental and climate changes, the national and local guidelines clearly recommend using brownfield in, pre uh, in preference to green sites. So have we exhausted all the brownfield sites in Deepings? 
Of course not, and not likely to in the near future because of the change in retail demographic exposed by the COVID-19. So why is this perseverance? Is it because brownfield sites are substantially more expensive to develop as compared to virgin green site? Certainly the financial advantages are a major incentive for the developers. Furthermore, the local plan policy SP4, as we already heard, clearly requests evidence of substantial support from the local community. Despite several recent consultations showing consistently greater than 90% local objection, 30 seconds. the push goes on. To me, this is analogous to modern day referenda, but if you don't get the right answer, you keep on repeating it until you get one. So what is the way forward? This historic community-centered open green space has benefited the past and present generation beyond expectation and should be preserved. The temptation to trade it off for one-time financial gain should be strongly resisted. Instead, its green environmental credentials should be adapted in response to evolving hostile world, where it pays even greater dividends for our children and grandchildren. It is our duty and we owe it to them. I, owe, I urge the committee members to reject this application outright. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. And the final speaker is the uh, applicant's agent, uh, Lynette Swinburne, please. Thank you. Um, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Lynette. Thank you. Excellent. Chair, committee members and officers, my name is Lynette Swinburne. I'm a Chartered Town Planner and I'm the agent for this application, which has been submitted on behalf of Lincolnshire County Council's corporate property team. The application site lies to the west of Millfield Road and forms an area of land between it and the A15. The land is in use for agriculture and other than the public footpath that extends across the site, it is, it is in private ownership with no right of access and let on a farming tenancy basis. In May 2008, an event was held in Market Deeping where the team engaged with local residents to discuss with their comments about the emerging proposals. The views of a small proportion of residents living in the immediate vicinity of the site are noted. Market Deeping is a sustainable settlement which is suitable for growth and with a population in excess of 13,000 residents. Therefore, it is only a small proportion who seem to be concerned about development nearby. The officer's report confirms that there are no technical barriers to the site coming forward and matters of highways, drainage, etc. can be satisfactorily addressed. The scheme offers a range of benefits to market deeping and would deliver 260 new homes, at least 30% of which would be affordable, which is about 78 houses. The scheme proposes a generous amount of, of open space which is focused centrally around the existing public right of way and would create a large recreational green space at its heart. In total, 2.6 hectares of public open space is proposed, which is 22% of the overall site area. And just to set that in context, the other sites proposed in the neighbourhood plan for local green space do not exceed together 2.5 hectares. So it's larger than all of, all of the local green spaces. Um, in addition, a green footpath link is proposed, which would extend along the entire boundary of the site, running parallel to Millfield Road. Other contributions to the site or arising from the scheme would include more than a million pounds towards local schools. I hope this is a helpful overview of the proposed development and the opportunities it presents to market deeping, bringing new homes and a truly accessible and available public open space, which themselves are important material considerations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lynette. Uh, so we now move on to questions to the uh, applicant's agent and to the case officer. First of all, are there any questions, please, to the applicant's agent? Councillor Dilks. Councillor Dilks, Phil, please. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Sorry. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, and thank you uh, to, I think it's Lynette, thank you for your presentation. Um, I know what you say that um, only a small proportion of the 13,000 people in the deepings have objected. 
Um, but what proportion of them have actually said that they're in favour of this site? And would you accept that, in fact, there is no substantial or, in fact, any community support for the application? Thank you, Phil. Lynette? Could you unmute yourself, Lynette? Sorry, I managed to get the camera on, but the microphone off. <laughs> um, <laughs> so in, we did have a community listening event, and the statement of community involvement sets that out. I mean, as you, you'll be aware in of many applications, it's the, the vocal people that often get heard, and people who support development often aren't the ones that are the proactive ones that come out and support it. I mean, at the present time, we haven't sort of gone door knocking or, or done anything further, but the event was an opportunity to try and encourage people to come out and support it. Thank you, Lynette. Uh, any further questions to the applicant's agent? Councillor <laughs> Crawford indicated that she'd like to speak. So whether it's a question to the applicant's agent or debate. Is that speak in debate, uh, Helen, or ask a question? Um, uh, of... Ask a question of the agent, please. Fine, far away. Um, it states that the road would need to be widened. Um, so will this mean a loss of well-established trees to get the road widened so it's suitable for traffic? Lynette? The design of the road would be highways led. I mean, the, obviously, the number of trees to be removed would be minimal. And I think I can't I can't comment in technical detail about the exact number of trees that be removed. But as you can see from the indicative layout and the plans that encourage that support the application, the majority of trees do remain on the site, particularly along the frontage. Thank you. Thank you, Lynette. Any more questions to Lynette? No further indications, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Do you have any questions to the case officer? Councillor Dilks. Councillor Dilks, Phil, please. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And can I thank um, um, the case officer Phil? Um, I did I did um, put in a, a question, a late question, and you uh, kindly answered it. I, my question was about whether or not we should be adding, or whether there were any other valid reasons for refusal other than SB4, not not complying with SB4. And uh, I thank you for adding. Um, a, a, another aspect of SB4, but um, I would like to ask your advice on given the state of the neighbourhood plan now, and I understand what you're saying that we can't give it full weight, um, but we can give it some weight, can we not, particularly at the stage that it is, is at now, and um, I'd like to ask you what weight would the, the neighbourhood plan have um, once it is approved, and, and of course we've heard that were it not for COVID-19, it may well have been already approved by now. Um, so there is that. And then I would also like to ask if actually uh, prematurity of the application would be a valid reason for um, refusal, uh, given the um, Village Green application particularly. And then further, um, would, contrary to local plan policy OS1, be valid? And OS1, uh, I made a note of it, uh, says on page 77 of our local plan, all existing open space, including allotments, parks, play spaces, sports pitches, and informal open space, which I would say this is, routeways and corridors will be protected. Phil, will can I remind you, you should be asking a question, please. Well, I am. I'm asking if OS1 would be valid as a, um, a, as a refusal, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Paul. Um, Thank you, Paul. And finally, if I can, finally, if I may, Bob, uh, Chairman, um, on page 20 of the local plan, um, in the vision for SK, uh, we say that the plan will seek to ensure that the deepings defining assets, including heritage assets and accessible green space, will be retained and enhanced where possible. Thank you. Sorry for the long questions, but there are several there. Chairman. Thank you, Phil. Sorry for interrupting you. Phil, Phil Moore. Uh, OK, thank you, Councillor Dilks. I'll try and answer those in turn. Um, so the, the weight 
that can be afforded to the neighbourhood plan at the moment. Overall, it can be given um, a degree of weight uh, because of its advanced state of preparation and where we are at the moment with it being under examination. However, uh, the MPPF is very clear about uh, the circumstances where we should or can give weight to emerging plans. Uh, and one of the things is that you have to take into account is the, the, the degree to which there are unresolved um, objections. And in terms of the policy, I think it's policy 14 of the draft neighbourhood plan, which talks about green space. Uh, there are clearly outstanding objections there, which um, the inspector has asked, or the examiner, I should say, has asked for clarification. And uh, I'm told by my policy colleagues that that particular issue is now going to be discussed in more detail at a public hearing. So clearly there are unresolved issues there which the examiner needs to look into in greater detail. So at this point, and in accordance with the MPPF, we, we can give only very limited weight, if any, to the policies relating to green space, to specifically policy 14 of the draft neighbourhood plan. Uh, you asked about prematurity. Um, again, I, I think the same thing applies there, that um, the, this particular policy relating to green space is, is up in the air at the moment. We won't know what's happening there until this public hearing has happened and the, the examiner has uh, made his or her comments. So I don't, I don't think prematurity as an additional reason for refusal is, is necessary or, or appropriate. Um, policy OS1 in the local plan. Um, when it talks about uh, th there's a general presumption against loss of open space, uh, and I think you said that it included informal green space there. I don't think we're talking about open countryside there. We're talking about things like recreation grounds, parks, um, allotments are mentioned. Informal green space might mean a um, something like a country park or, or an area of a park that is not formally set out as sports field or gardens and things like that. But it doesn't, I don't think you could stretch it to mean open countryside, which is in agricultural use. Um, what was the, sorry, what was the final one? Um, can you remind me, Councillor Dilks, what your final point was? Uh, just the vision, the uh, page 20, the vision for SK. Um, oh, I think you perhaps have you covered that one, uh, Phil, perhaps you have. Yeah, I, I think that that... Uh, Accessible it, green space. Yeah, I, I, again, that, that's what it's talking about, um, uh, retaining areas that are already um, formally recognised as green space uh, and... Uh, again, I, I repeat, that might mean things like parks, recreation grounds, uh, woodland, things like that. At the moment, that area is not doesn't have any formal designation as a green space. It has a footpath running through it, a public footpath, public right of way, which wouldn't be affected by this proposal. It would, the course of that footpath would still remain potentially through open space, um, but. The land does not have any formal designation at this time. It may well do. We don't know yet until the uh, the neighbourhood plan has been fully examined. So I, I don't think there's any contradiction with that particular policy or that the vision of the local plan. But well, I, thank I've you. Just, I just, appreciate sorry. your advice. Thank you for that. I, I, I would. I would perhaps only argue with you on the um, designation as open countryside. I mean, I think it's on so the we're edge. Here, we're here to ask questions, not not to argue with the, uh, pardon, the case you. officer. <laughs> okay, have we got more uh, members wishing to ask a question of the case officer, please? We've got Councillor Bisnell Singh next. Uh, Councillor Bisnell Singh, Harish, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That was just a, a quick little pointer to NPPF 40 years to fail with, with regards to the open space. 
Thank you. Thank you very much, Harish. I saw Councillor Helen Crawford. Mark. Councillor Helen Crawford, do you wish to ask a question? No, I've already done mine. Thank you. Councillor Morgan next. Thank you. Councillor Charmaine Morgan. Charmaine? Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I did actually have similar um, questions to, to Phil. Um, what strikes me regarding this space, uh, and I, I'd like your view on this um, after Phil Moore as opposed to Fair Council Dilts, um, is although um, you said it's, it's his open countryside, it clearly isn't actually. This particular space um, is clearly um, bordered by the road and housing on the other side. So therefore, um, it's not exactly what I would call open countryside. It's the first point, and I'd like your your view just to clarify that. And and is it a subjective decision really, and um, what the definition is within the local plan? Because when I read it, I certainly would have thought of a site like this. Um, the the other question I had is, what other space is there within the market deeping that offers an equivalent level of amenity? to members of the public within the market DP area. So um, there is the reason I'm asking is because it's very tempting to look at a rural map and see all this lovely greenery all around it and think, oh, that's great. That, that, you know, anyone can go anywhere. Well, no, can, can we keep comments? Can we keep to questions, please, Charmaine? Yeah, because we, so we are limited to space. Yes, and you will, the, you will get the opportunity to make your comments in debate, please. So that's the question. What alternative equivalent amenity would there be for the people of Market Deeping if this site's developed? Equivalent amenity. Thank you, Charmaine. Phil? Okay, so on the first one of those questions, uh, is this or isn't it open countryside? Um, it is open countryside in the sense that it is undeveloped agricultural land uh, beyond the uh, built limits of, of the town. Um, I take your point that it is enclosed by the bypass. Um, but in planning terms, it's open countryside. The use, authorised use of that land is agriculture. It doesn't have any um, or the other formal authorised use beyond that. Um, in, in terms of is, is there an equivalent? Um, well, go back to what I said before. At the moment, the current use of that land is agriculture. It might not be intensively cultivated, but it's still agricultural land. It's not a formal park or hasn't yet at least been formally designated as um, green space in the neighbourhood plan. So its current status is agricultural land, um, open countryside, which is used for agricultural purposes. Although it's appreciated that local people do use it for dog walking and exercise, etc., that's more of an informal use that's happened over the years rather than its formal planning use. Thank you, Phil. Okay, Councillor Exton, Mike, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's a question to Phil. Uh, looking at the uh, LCC Highways report 5.7, it only mentions upgrading Millfield Lane to the Stamford Road Junction. Surely there's some concern, and my concern is, that Millfield Road continues right round to uh, Towngate West, which takes you on to the busy, uh, eventually onto the A15, which is major route to the local doctors and the major supermarket. Surely some consideration has got to be made if and when this uh, application goes through. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Phil? Um, so we, we, as you'll see from the report, there's no objection from LCC Highways, who are, it has to be said, separate from LCC as a property developer. Uh, they've looked at this in, in terms of the, the usual way they, they assess these things. They're looking at our traffic impacts severe in terms of the MPPF, are there any highway safety issues? And they've concluded that there are neither highway safety issues or a severe impact. And they will have looked at traffic flows in every direction. Um, I, I'm not a highways expert, so I, I can't give you any more detailed response than, than that, I'm afraid. Thank you, Phil. Uh, Councillor Penny Mills, Penny, please. 
Um, yes, thank you. Question to Phil. Um, First of all, um, this idea of an extra reason for refusal being the setting of the town, the value of an open space, and detrimental to uh, accessibility and landscape, uh, would EN3 be a possible reason here, green infrastructure? What policy do we have on the environment and community health and wealth being in it? and well-being in this context. And secondly, well, and possibly EN1. And, and the other thing is, um, following Will's wonderful presentation on trees um, last time, um, there are plenty of these mature trees on this site. Is this a case for a preemptive TPO uh, situation um, as well? So the first one is the most important, obviously, but I do think, you know, we should start preempting with our protection of trees. Thank you, Penny. Phil? Phil Moore, you're not, you've not unmuted yourself, Phil. Sorry, uh, I was uh, just looking for policy EN3. This might just take me a couple of seconds. Bear with me. In, in the meantime, uh, Chairman, perhaps I can comment on the, the point about uh, preemptive TPOs. I think. Uh, well, Councillor Phil, yeah, I will, yes. Yeah, just very briefly, I think uh, uh, Councillor Milnes uh, makes a valid point, and we should be looking at uh, potential sites for TPOs. But anyway, uh, that's for future discussion. Thank you for that, Will. Are you okay now, Phil? Uh, yeah. So on the first point, um, yeah, I have mentioned this in the additional items paper, and I mentioned it earlier on in the presentation, the Office of View is that the site is capable of being developed with an appropriate design and landscaping, et cetera, that would, uh, could potentially retain the rural aspect of Millfield Lane, or Millfield Road, sorry, uh, and uh, you know, not be harmful to the character and appearance of the area. However, that's a planning judgment, and it wouldn't be unreasonable for members to come to a different conclusion if members felt that this particular area, that the openness of the area was particularly important for the setting of, of the town. EN3, um, whether you could add that, I mean, potential, if, if you were going to go, if members were going to go down the route of adding an additional reason, there there is... Uh, I think I've set out in the additional items paper what policies it could be potentially used. EN1, which is to do with the uh, impact of developments on the wider landscape. Uh, DE1, which is to do with design. Um, and there's another criteria of SP4, which is to do with developments being appropriate to their context. EN3 talks about green infrastructure. Development proposals should ensure that existing and new green infrastructure is considered and integrated into the scheme design, taking opportunities to enrich biodiversity, etc. Um, and then he goes on to say proposals that cause loss or harm to this network will not be permitted unless there are other factors. So you have to be convinced that this proposal would cause loss or harm to green infrastructure network um, and biodiversity and um, that sort of thing. Might be a bit difficult to, to apply that policy given that this is an outline application and there are no details of landscaping uh, and layout, etc. at this stage, because um, it could be possible with an appropriate layout to ensure that biodiversity is actually improved um, and that um, you know there is greater access to, to open space, etc. So I, I would probably advise that if you're going to go down an additional reason for refusal, that particular policy might not be uh, applicable. And I, I'm on the issue of TPOs. Um, I'm probably repeating what Will said, but. Um, it has been noted that there are trees down there are potentially worthy of a TPO. Our tree officer has pointed that out, and um, we will be asking our tree officer to survey those trees and consider whether, you know, we should be 
TPO in them. Thank you, Phil. Thank you. Penny, do you want to come back quickly? Yes, yes, thank you. Just very quickly on EN3, I notice um, on page 63 of the local plan, it says should be read in uh, as well with OS1, and it talks in there about, um, uh, sorry, I'm losing my space a bit, um, about tourism and um, health and all that sort of thing that we're talking about, about an area like this on the edge of the deepings. Um, uh, and I just wondered how all that would fit in. I understand your reservations a bit at an outline stage, but um, surely we should be putting forward our concerns for the future for any potential details that might come in, or even if they push for it to be allocated in the review, something like that. Maybe we should be setting out all our concerns. I mean. You know, localism is important, obviously, in the inspection. I remind you for questions, please, Penny. Yeah, sorry. Well, if, if if we could just clarify then, EN3 together with OS1 um, as a potential reason. Thank you, Penny. Phil, anything to add to what you've already said? I, I don't think so. I, th I, th I think I already outlined uh, what OS1 is trying to achieve in terms of um, making sure that we don't lose established recreational parks, uh, recreation grounds, that kind of thing, rather than what is currently open countryside. That might, that could change in the future if the Deepings Neighbourhood Plan is successful in designating this land as open space. But at the moment, we're in a, it's a bit up in the air and we don't, we won't know until the examiner has fully considered that uh, in his process of examination. Thank you, Phil. I'm conscious that um, unless you want me to adjourn the meeting, I need a proposal to continue as we've exceeded our three hours. I'll propose, Chair. Thank you, Robert. Do you have a seconder to continue with the meeting? I will second. Thank you, Judy. OK. Are there any more questions, please, to uh, the case officer, Joe? Um. Just before we carry on, Mr. Chairman, can we just do a, a quick vote by exception on the extension for three hour, um, of three hours? Okay. Does this, does this have to be a formal vote or just by exception? Exception's fine. Any, any, anybody against continuing the meeting to a conclusion of all the applications to be determined? Please indicate in the chat box. I can't see anything appearing in the chat box. How I will take it, we're all uh, happy to continue with the meeting until all applications are determined. Thank you. So we now move on to debate. Um, uh, Robert Reid, Councillor Reid. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman. Um, I think uh, with this uh, application, we uh, need to uh, be careful with interpretation, particularly of the consistency of SP4. Um, and I would um, debate that with um, uh, and ask for other members for that consideration. I think in the application, uh, you can't deny there isn't a, gen a generous green space allocation of 22.5%. I think the uh, questions and presentation where uh, trees is concerned could be uh, dealt with uh, by condition. Um, I note in today's uh, deliberations that um, OS1 seems to be uh, topical. Um, however, I think um, other searches uh, that have particularly been the answers to uh, the questions that members have put uh, to the case officer are possibly, in my opinion, open to a uh, challenge. So it would be uh, uh, my waiting that I think um, I should be uh, staying where we are uh, with SP4 um, and uh, I should be um, supporting the recommendation but I shan't propose it because um, I think that's for um, the opportunity of a local member's representation for market deeping. Thank you very much Chair. Thank you for that Robert. Uh, Councillor Dilks, Phil please. 
Thank you. Thank I, I would be happy to um, support the proposal and, and propose a refusal of this application. I hear what um, Councillor Robert Reid says, but I would like us to consider a little bit more whether we should be adding more um, of the uh, 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 more conditions. I, I hear what you say, Robert. You know, it's got to be the appropriate ones, and I also hear the advice uh, that Phil has given us. Um, can I just say, um, for those um, not um, who haven't made their minds up yet, um, a point of clarity, it is described as agricultural, the land is, but for those not familiar with the area and, and who weren't able to go on the site visit, I would just clarify, as speakers have said, this field was used for decades, decades, you know, probably 100 years, as a location for the sadly defunct deep in show. It's known as the showground locally. Yes, it's agricultural, which may conjure up images of livestock or farmers' crops, but the reality is it's a hay meadow. And that's why, you know, it, it get, that's why it gets, it's very popular with the dog walkers, the walkers and so on. And it forms actually a barrier and a welcome open space barrier between Millfield Road, the edge of the settlement of Market Deeping, and the bypass. So it's hardly open countryside, uh, but it is, you know, um, uh, open land, if I can call that, at the edge of the settlement. We can argue about its designation, but if this plan is passed, there will clearly be a loss of a publicly owned asset. It's owned by the county council. It's owned by us, the ratepayers. Um, I also note, of course, that the village application, the village green application, has been rejected by the applicant, Lincolnshire County Council, who clearly have a conflict of interest and a substantial financial interest in this matter. Um, I note that the chairman and cabinet member for planning at this council are also county councillors uh, and um, had perhaps had some involvement in that decision and have taken legal advice and made statements today. Um, so, you know, that's, um, um, I'm, I'm pleased that they've made those statements. Um, I'm disappointed in the application um, from the county council. Frankly, I think it borders on bullying by the county council to slip this application in um, before the public inquiry on the village green and before the, na the neighbourhood plan is adopted, hopefully in May next year, um, it would have been, uh, I'd suggest, already adopted by now had it not been for COVID. So in some degree, the county council has been saved by COVID. So if this application is passed, I would suggest that not a sod will be turned before Deeping's votes for the, na for the neighbourhood plan. 30 seconds. For the neighbourhood plan, which would then mean that such an application would not get through at all. Um, I welcome what's said on uh, TPOs. It does seem a bit of a David and Goliath fight. Um, I think it's regrettable to change the character of Millfield Road, which is, you know, a, um, a country lane. I don't see those as improvements, quite the reverse. I propose a refusal. I'm happy to accept the other grounds that have been mentioned. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Phil. Uh, Councillor Selby, Ian, please. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. I will be brief. Um, first of all, I would say let's not be harsh um, and let's not hold it against Lincolnshire County Council for um, for bringing this application forward. Um, they have had difficulty in the past balancing their books, hence why, we, in my view, we have the devolution debate today. Um, it is our County Council at the end of the day, and they are trying to work on our behalf. However, I hear the voice of the local residents, uh, the elected representatives, and um, also looking at page 112 of the local plan, um, it's clear on there that there is a substantial area for uh, residential development already. And I think this, this particular uh, application site, um, I think maybe in time it probably will be developed. However, I don't think this time is, is right. Um, and it's been said that it gives a nice buffer there between the, the town and the and the road at the moment, which it does. Um, also, it's been said that uh, um, that was the site of the um, of the Deeping Show. Well, when I was little, I used to uh, I used to go to that show, and I probably got some rosettes from that show as well. Um, long time ago, though, mind. But anyway, I should be supporting the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Keep growing the spuds, Ian. Thank, thank you. Are you. Does that mean you're seconding the uh, Phillips Phil Dilson's proposal? No, I'll leave it to a local member. 
Okay. Uh, Councillor Bisnell Singh, Harish, please. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I would like to, on the recommendations for the refusal, development to be refused, to ask uh, the, the condition, the OS1, which is protecting existing open space as an additional reason uh, for it. I agree with everything that has been said. I think we should really protect this green space because it does provide a very important amenities for the residents. Thank you. Thank you, Harish. Uh, could I ask Will Richards to come in on these additional reasons, please? Before we go to a vote, there are no other speakers, uh, member speakers, wish to join in the debate. So, Phil and then Martha Rees. Uh, Chairman, thank you. Uh, very briefly, I um, dealing with Councillor uh, Bithnau Singh's uh, uh, suggestion uh, <clears throat> in terms of uh, the uh, open space. Um, <clears throat> I, th I think uh, the issue is uh, it's uh, according to the agent, it's uh, privately owned. I, I think that is a comment that I can't agree with because it's owned by the county council, and there's been uh, uh, various uh, uses, um, established uses, uh, possibly over the years. Uh, and so I, I don't think uh, we can add any. Um, Harish, could you remind me of your point about the this open space? Uh, I didn't make note of it, so uh, I wasn't expecting a question. It's, uh, it's on, by, on uh, page one, uh, 77 on our local plan, and it says protecting open space. All existing open space, including allotments, parks, equipment, play space, sport features, informal or natural open space and uh, will be protected. So local okay. plan policy OS1 will. Give any yeah, insight yeah. into yeah. Got it. Got it. it into a, a, thank you. Yeah, okay. Um, I, I, I think we need to sort of look at the status before we can make a decision today on that uh, in terms of um, public open space. Is it um, it is accessible by, by the public. Is that um, something that's um, I, I, you know fixed, or is it something that is being uh, inverted commas tolerated by the county council? I've dealt with numerous uh, as an advocate um, uh, village green applications, and uh, the fact that land is privately owned and the owners don't object to people walking or using it doesn't mean to say they they accept it as as public open space so so i don't think um without further research we can i i can give you any advice on os1 i think it's been well used sorry harish sorry harish sorry. Sorry. Martha sorry. Reese, please in terms of the other uh, suggested reasons for refusal, I, I, I defer to um, Phil, Phil Moore on those. But uh, in terms of the open space, no, I don't think until we get further evidence, um, you know, is it classified as a public open space in the local plan? Um, I don't know. Thank you for that, Will. Martha? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just wanted to um, reiterate the comments of Mr. Moore and obviously uh, Mr. Richards that he's just said. Um, this land, it's for it's it's recognised planning use currently is agricultural land. It is not classed as informal open space. Therefore, it, uh, I agree with the comments of the other officers that um, OS1 wouldn't be um, a recommended reason to add to the, your list of refusals. It is um, it, it is a fact that it's um, privately owned and actually access could be cut off. Obviously, the county council haven't done that. Obviously, there's the evidence of the use over the years, but it is a fact it's privately owned and could be cut off. It's not informal open space uh, to come with an OS1. Um, I wonder, Chairman, whether um, you could ask um, the proposer, I think it was Council Dilks, to confirm whether he's adding any other reasons for refusal or not, other than the ones that Mr. Moore put in his report on the additional papers. Because I'm sorry, I was just a little confused whether he actually did put forward some additional um, reasons. Apologies, Chairman. Thank you, Martha. Phil, can Chairman, you respond to that? Yeah. Um, uh, no, I didn't actually put any forward. I, I, I said I'm happy 
um, with the additional um, suggested ones, and, and I would leave it to you know debate. Um, having heard the debate, though, uh, and I hear what uh, the head of planning says, of course, you know it is it's owned by the county council. There is established public use over the years. The public does have access, public access to it uh, right now, and has done for many years. I, I do not see any problem or hindrance to putting OS1 in as an extra uh, refusal condition um, reason. Um, you I know, think the point Will is making, Phil, would it be uh, substantial and defensible on an appeal? And, and I, don't, I think what Will is saying is it would be very difficult to defend it on an appeal. Am I, would, would that be right, Will? Okay, just nod the head, that'll be fine, yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. So, uh, were there any other reasons, Phil, that uh, you were looking to? Well, there were the reasons that um, Phil did uh, put in, in his additional papers. Forgive me, I can't remember what Sorry. they were right now. Okay. Perhaps he could advise us. Uh, Certainly there was extra a bit on SP4, wasn't there? Not needed. Do you want me to come in here? Yeah, just before you do, uh, Penny, do you want to add anything new? Because I had effectively closed the debate when calling upon Will and uh, Martha to uh, give further clarification on reasons for refusal. Do you just wish to come back very quickly? Well, if we're going to add the setting of the town, a distinctive market town, um, detrimental to the rural aspect on this edge of the town, a buffer to the A15, <coughs> Not quite sure what policy we'd use. Would that be EN1? <laughs> okay, what I'm going to do now is ask Phil to sort of sum this up and uh, give us some guidance on additional reasons for refusal. Then I'll go to the uh, vote, please. Thank you, Chairman. So, so the recommendation as set out in the additional items paper is to refuse on policy SP4 criteria A and E. But I have said in there it wouldn't be unreasonable for members to add an additional reason for refusal if they were concerned about the impact on the character and the appearance of the area, uh, and that the policies, the relevant policies to refer to would be um, criteria B and D of SP4, um, DE1 and EN1. And they're, yeah. they're all policies which are relating to the character and appearance of the area. So, sorry, what was the first one there, Phil? What was the first one? PE one. So, so D, 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 E one. D, E. Is D, E one. Yep. E, N, one. Yep. And criteria B and D of SP four. Are members clear on the, the, the reasons we're giving for refusal there? As a proposal, Mr. Chairman, I am, and I, I would be happy to include those in, in my proposal. Thank you, and thank, thank you, you, Phil. Thank you, Phil. Uh, have we a seconder, please? I'll second it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Can we move to a vote then, please? And the, the vote is for refusal. Um, sorry, can we just have a No. No, I so said we, we did. We have wound the debate up. Is it a question, a specific question? Um, can I just clarify? Are we adding that extra reasons that Phil has just um, yeah. set out? Yeah, Is we're, that we're, voting we're, on as well? We're, we're refusing it on the grounds of SP4, B, and D, plus DE1 and EN1, as I understand it. And that's additional to. Um, the original reason for refusal is that correct, Phil? Yes. Yes, that, that's correct. In addition to the original reason, as set out in the additional items paper. So it's the additional items paper we're looking at, Penny. Uh, plus okay. the reason is that right? Phil's nodding yes. Clarify that because it's in addition to what's set out in the additional paper. We're adding SP four B and D. D, E, 1 and E, N, 1. Is that correct? Correct. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Can we move to the vote, please, Shelley? Certainly. Thank you, Chairman. <laughs> Councillor David Bellamy? Four. Councillor Harish Bisnell Singh? Four refusal. 
Councillor Helen Crawford. Poor refusal. Councillor Phil Dilks. Poor refusal. Councillor Mike Exton. Poor refusal. And Mrs Rosemary Cabry Brown. Councillor Cabry Brown. I think she might have been taken ill, Shelley. Yeah, no, no, I'm oh, here. You're there, are you? Okay, yes. good. F for refusal. Thank you. Thank you, Rosemary. I'm sorry, I just couldn't get connected before. <laughs> Councillor Penny Milnes. For refusal. Councillor Charmaine Morgan. For refusal. Councillor Robert Reed. For. Councillor Ian Selby. For refusal. Councillor Jackie Smith. For refusal. Councillor Mrs Judy Smith. For refusal. Chairman Councillor Bob Adams. For refusal. Thank you. That appears to be unanimous, Chairman. That is unanimous. Fine. So it's just gone half past one. I propose we have a break for lunch and reconvene at two o'clock, please. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.